All right. Um, will this be on YouTube? Yes, I'm doing it pretty much specifically for you. I mean, not specifically for you to guys, for you guys to enjoy as well. But are you gonna make Emacs category? Oh, give me a second. <clears throat> All right. So um, this is going to be the first time and most likely the last time I'll be doing something like this, guys. But here we go. Uh, matchup tier list with explanations. Uh, now, before we begin, I'm going to explain the rules. So, um, when it comes to every matchup, I'm going to put them in their final tier with like what you're supposed to do. For example, against something like, uh, let's say this champion, right? If you're emaxing and the default way to play against this champion is emax, he will be, for, exa for example, in something like B tier. But I'm going to inform you guys that if you for some reason want to Q max against this champion the difficulty jumps from B to S to impossible right and this is this is pretty much how we're gonna do it um, that's number one number two I am not going to include champions that you basically never see in your lane right we're just gonna ignore something like Bart we're just gonna ignore something like um, I don't know Draven, right? You, you you might see Draven mid or Draven top once or twice in your life. That's it. It's it's completely pointless for us to talk about this because the champs are so rare. It's like equivalent of finding Yumi top. It makes no sense. So, all right. So uh, let's begin. Aatrox. This is a champion that. Oh, and one more thing. Um, S tier. We're going we're going from D tier to S tier from like from the easiest ones to the hardest ones S tier Which is you know, it makes sense because S is red. So it kind of kind of like um, uh, Shows danger, right? It, it's a red color. So <laughs> you know what I mean, but um, yeah S tier is gonna be the S tier matchups are going to be the, the hardest in the game and D tier I wonder if we're gonna even have any D tier matchups. We'll see All right, uh, eight trucks Aatrox is a matchup where you're supposed to Q-max in my opinion. E-maxing into this champion is not a good idea because eventually you're going to reach the point when you have no stacks, he's just going to be, going to be healing on you. You need to Q-max into Aatrox. There is not much you can do about it. Um, and it's hard against very good Aatrox players. Good luck against mediocre ones. You know, it's going to get better. But um, I'm going to put him in A tier. One more thing I forgot to mention. This is my from my experience. This is not how like you gonna you guys gonna see it in like you know in your division, right? This is from my experience. How like this this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to make uh, tier list matchup or like anything like this for a uh, matchup uh, guide or tier list or anything like this for a long time. Because for everyone, the experience is going to feel different. This is my experience, how it feels in high level. Now, Ari, um, Q maxing into this champion, I would say she's probably like an A tier matchup. If you E max, it's I would put it her like I would put her the somewhere like B. And I think you're supposed honestly in lower elos, I would say that you should probably Q max into this champion. In high elos, uh, you need prio more often. And it's going to be pain in the ass. If you're a god at juking, if you feel like you're never gonna eat a charm, then Q maxing might be the way, but like honestly, like she's gonna push really hard, she will always have prio, and it's gonna be similar for many mages mages to be honest. Um What's the cutoff for high low? Everyone's gonna have a different opinion, but I'm talking from my experience, so Master Plus, Master GM Challenger games. Um, if you're gonna Emax, and I think it's you're supposed to Emax into this matchup, I would say she's around B. Uh, she's not the strongest right now, not the not the not the easiest to, to play against. It's like something like that. Ashkan, now if you if you're gonna Q Max into this champion, it's like the lane is impossible to play. You just can't play the the, the game at all, right? Uh, you're gonna get poked down. His one auto attack uh, counts as two. I mean, he he auto, auto attacks twice, even though he attacks once, right? It makes so much freaking sense. Um, he does massive amounts of damage. He has a gap closer. It's impossible to get to him. Q Maxing, just just don't do it. Don't. You're not gonna like it, man. You're just not gonna like it long term. Uh, it's gonna be pain in the ass. Um, 
If you're Emaxing though, if you play the lane properly, and in general, as Emax, you want to be not super aggressive level 1. When you can start being aggressive as Emax, Nasus is level 3 when you have level 2 E. Because this almost doubles your damage, pretty much. Like, the jump from level 1 E to level 2 E is a massive increase in damage. So, uh, this is in general how you're supposed to play Emax. But uh, if you're Emaxing into this champion and you play properly, honestly, Emax into this champ, I would put him in B. In S tier, completely unplayable. In B tier, I would say, you know, it's it's man it's manageable. Uh, Akali, Akali, I'm gonna put it in A tier. It's not really an Emax matchup. I recommend I would recommend maxing Q into her. Um, I mean, you could Emax technically, and you're gonna be fine into her. Like, don't don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's not like the biggest lane bully of all time. She's melee. So, like, if, if you're, like, good enough at spacing, you, you're going to be fine Q-maxing into this. It's like, every time, remember, every time you can Q into a matchup, you should. Because you just scale harder. So, um... Normally, I would put... If she wasn't really strong, I would put her in B tier. But currently, she's very... Since the season started, she's very, very strong. Like, borderline overpowered. So, I'm going to put it in A. Because... Because... It is what it is. Now, what is this champion? Now, this tier list, I know, consists of every champion in the game, except for Smolder and Huey. And we're going to talk about these two. But what is this? If anyone knows, let me know. We're going we're gonna jump, to gonna jump further. Uh, Anivia, S tier. doesn't matter if you Q-max or E-max. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you Q-max into this champion, like you really have to hate your life, by the way. But if, you, if you're E-maxing, the laning phase is going to be fine. But outside of laning phase... You, like this champion counters you so hard throughout the game that uh, like overall outside of laning phase you're just not you you won't be able to play into the champion like she slows you she has a wall against immobile champions uh, like she just counters these champs too hard so like there's just there's just nothing you can do about it so Aphelios, they took it part when they when they showed her sister his sister. Alright, so we don't care about Aphelios because we're not gonna see him in, in mid lane or top lane really. No, it's not Aphelios. Aphelios is here. Uh, anyway, um This guy no, this guy don't know what it is. Amumu no. Any Yes, any. Any is A. I mean <sighs> All right, look. Any is hard to describe because if you're Q maxing into any, you will be bullied out of lane, and it's not going to be good. But if you're E maxing, you. All right, I'm gonna put any in B. Like any is if you're Q maxing any is A tier. If you're E maxing any is B. This is this is how I how I would I would put like, you know how how I would um, rate her. Because like as as E max you can like bully her like you know she's not gonna have what it takes. On on top of that the, the biggest pro problem for any is that when you're E maxing you outrange her. There's some some of these champions even if you're E maxing they will be still able to farm freely no problem and do everything and blah 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 because they have good range. Any doesn't have range. That's one of her weakness. And and um, with Emax, I would say that this, this matchup is probably not the hardest. You can just, you know, you're gonna be fine. Definitely not C because she, it's, it's a problematic champion to deal with. Uh, she has very high burst. She can set up ganks very well. Uh, she just presses R on you, and she's an unmissable stun. So, but um, but yeah, Aurelion Soul S tier. Uh, this champion is. Uh, Honestly, this is a dodge tier. Like there, there should be ne next tier. I should make a next tier, which is dodge. But I think S is good enough. Uh, Aurelion Soul. I definitely recommend Q maxing into this champion because uh, Aurelion Soul doesn't do much early. So you can uh, get your stacks and everything, uh, and you're gonna be fine. The problem is uh, the champion counters Nasus so hard outside of laning phase that he just can't play the game. Basically, uh, he gets Rylize, usually first or second item, uh, and you just, you just can't move your character, right? You just can't. The moment you flash on him, if, if you use flash, right, um, 
he just flies away. You can't wither him because he's immune to slows during his flight. Uh, the champion is literally impossible to deal with, and you need to hope that someone on your team can lock him down so you can finish him off fast. Uh, other than that, S tier, easy peasy. Uh, just it, it's it's ridiculous how 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 hard uh, Aurelion Soul counters Nasus. It's crazy. It's crazy actually. All right, next up we have Azir. Azir is a match. Azir is like an S tier matchup if you're Q, Q maxing. Q maxing into this matchup again. Uh, just best of luck. Like seriously, like he's gonna poke you down so hard. He's gonna have prio. He's gonna move around the map. Like just freaking destroy your team. You can't play the game. Uh, if you're E maxing, I would put it like on the verge, like in between S and A. Um, e maxing into, into this matchup, into into this champion is mandatory. But even if you're E max uh, at level seven, around around that, you know, around level seven, something like this. He will be able to farm every single CS, so in the end, you're just emaxing, and you'll be probably even in CS if he's decent. And that's it. So you're just basically... You, you have worse scaling, but he's still going to be strong. And he's still very... He, he scales very, very hard, so... If, if some of these champions weren't hard sc scaling really hard or countering Nasus extremely hard, I would be putting them lower. But I'm like in this tier list. I'm like including everything. What what is this in laning phase, and what is this outside of laning phase? So, so this champ, like, just good luck, man. Just it's really hard to deal with this guy, and and that's it. Uh, Blitzcrank, obviously, not going to put this guy over here. A uh, brand now, uh, brand. You could see possibly this champion in mid lane. Uh, if you're gonna Q max into him, this would be an A matchup, A tier matchup. If you're gonna Emax into him, that would be a B tier matchup. And I think you're supposed to Emax into him, to be honest. If you're gonna Emax into this, this matchup, uh, into this champion, it's gonna be very similar to any. Which is ironic because, I mean, ironic. It's funny because uh, they both use fire, right? Th thematically very similar champs, but there are, um, I, I would put them in, uh, in, in B tier. A tier if 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 you're Q maxing like automatically it becomes harder right, but the the reward is better because you had more stacks, better ability to carry the game I guess. But Caitlyn I'm not gonna put her in this tier list. She's so rare that just you know whatever. Camille I would put it in A. Um, good Camille players will be definitely a pain in the ass to deal with. The problem with good Camille players is that she's gonna p punish you when she can early. And then you will never kill her because she will hold her E and not use it to engage on you and die like a dumbass. Uh, which means that automatically, if you're playing as good Camille, you can never win this lane. You're never going to win against good Camille. The best you can do is to be behind. So, like, you might ask, why not S tier? Because at one point, like, level 6, level 7, she starts losing to you in, in melee combat. You're stronger. And then scaling wise, I don't think it's the best champion in the game in team fights and so on. She's definitely she has her uses, right? I mean, she is a pretty good kid, but um, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't put her in S tier. I definitely not in B tier. Too. I think that A is a perfect spot for this champion. So Cassiopeia S tier. Uh, you're supposed to Qmax into this matchup, not Emax. If you're gonna Emax into Cass, you're gonna get outscaled so hard, it's gonna be sad to watch. Um, like at, you will never be able to one v one her if you Emax. Never. You will lose in melee range because because he won't have stacks. It's crazy, but if you're gonna Qmax into her, uh, the laning phase surprisingly, if you're if you have fancy feet, you're good at juking abilities and your spacing is good. Laning phase surprisingly is not going to be that bad. Against good Cassiopeia players, though, uh, she will land some of these. That's number one. Number two, you just like this champion counters Nasus really hard later. She's very she scales really hard too, right? She's even bigger of a problem when the game um, lasts a really long time because she doesn't have she doesn't need boots, right? She gets boots for free, so he has she's six items compared to five. Uh, so very hard scaling champion, uh, still hard in lane if she's good. Yeah, um, Nas is just not a good pick versus her. That's all. That's all there is to it. 
Corky. Uh, no, never mind. We have Chogat before that. Um, Chogat is a... That's a good one. I would put him in A tier, honestly. You're going to Q-Max into Chogat. You would definitely want to Q-Max into the champion. Now, if you're not careful, Chogat actually is strong early on. But the reason why he's A tier is not necessarily laning phase. The reason why he's an A tier is because... He is very useful in team fights. Very useful in team fights. Um, his ult will deal up to 1000 damage later on. He is insanely tanky. Like, he legitimately provides more value in team fights than Nasus. It is what it is. He is slow. All three, all three of his abilities CC. He has, he has very powerful slow and, and a knock-up on Q. He has long silence. That's pretty much you can't miss it. And he has more slows on his E. So pretty much perma slows because uh, he can use it three times. And then his ult very powerful. He gets insane amounts of health and tankiness. Um... Like, if this was only for laning phase, I would put it in B. But overall, it's an A tier matchup in general. Like, he provides more value than, than Nasus, realistically speaking. So, uh, Darius. Darius, if you Q-Max... Uh, no, no, excuse me, don't Q-Max. Please, just don't do it, okay? Don't Q-Max into this champion. Unless you hate yourself. Uh, now, if you're going to play properly and E-Max into this matchup... I would put him in... Pfft. That might sound crazy, but if you're going to Emax into Darius, I would put him in like A or B maybe even. Like I'm serious. Laning phase, if you're going to Emax into him and play properly, so not overextend early, start poking him really hard since like level 5 when you have 3 points into E. It's like it becomes like, at, at, at level 6, I think, if you play the lane properly, you're stronger than Darius. It's crazy, but it is what it is. If you have Sheen and you're playing properly level 6, I think you win. Because it's a full HP versus full HP, is a fight is never going to happen. You will poke him down before a fight in case he gets pissed off and wants to engage in you. He's going to be usually like two-thirds of his health or half, and he loses at this point. And you can get farmed pretty easily. Um, that being said, Darius is known to be strong in team fights. Like he can get very big, like flash plus E combos when your entire team is instantly dead. He can reset his ult. For that reason, like I just can't put him in B tier. Like I really can't. But uh, A tier, I think it's, it's sufficient. Like when it comes to laning phase, like if if you guys if you're struggling with Darius, I know a lot of you are. Just, just freaking, let's be honest. Like, if you're watching this right now, just, just don't lie to yourself. You don't like playing as Darius, right? But if you're gonna Emax into him, this is not that bad. Just, you, you just gotta practice spacing and not walking up to him close, and you're gonna be fine. So, Corky, uh, Corky is going to be probably the first C tier matchup. Uh, Corky is a champion that doesn't that isn't necessarily super dangerous in laning phase. Outside of laning phase, you just kind of run him down. He has no hard CC. His uh, mobility spell is very long cooldown, and uh, it doesn't actually allow him to move that far. It's not like, uh, for example, Camille's E, right? It's gonna be C. He's not dangerous in laning phase. He's not super dangerous outside of laning phase. It's like uh, Wither counters him, maybe not that hard because he's like a auto attacker spellcaster, but um, I think C is fair for this champion. In laning phase, you can nowadays you can hope for very few better matchups, very few. It's like honestly speaking, uh, Diana Q Max matchup. Q oh, by the way, absolutely Q Max into Corky. Um, e Maxing is just. You know, if you play it properly and don't take too much damage, uh, Q maxing, you should be totally fine. Sustaining his damage, just make sure to take uh, second wind and uh, D shield, right? And uh, Diana, I think B is fair. Uh, the only time where you have to uh, be careful is before six. After six, you basically always win this matchup. Uh, you're just stronger in melee. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, just make sure to ping wherever she roams before six, because 
her plan usually is to push the wave hard and just you know leave um but not always she can stay look if you play properly it's going to be very hard for her to do anything but if you if if you take too much damage then you're constantly in dangerous zone of getting killed very quickly with a one combo so you got to be careful careful in this matchup right it's like it's like one of these um cheesy matchups it's kind of like i don't know irelia or something like this you got to be careful not to your spacing needs to be perfect if your spacing is good then b tier if if you're going to overextend then all many of these champions will be s tier right because if you're not careful then this is what it is <laughs> it is what it is boys echo uh in laning phase echo i would put him in b uh it's not a champion that can kill you if you're playing properly um he has annoying poke and like slow ability in general like he's annoying but um in laning phase not a big deal i am really thinking about putting him in a because he scales unbelievably hard like honestly people i i think that echo is kind of like hidden maybe not op but hidden very strong echo is unbelievably strong in late game he scales really hard if he plays the game well he can get very good set this, this is like a this is like one of the those 1v9 champions like kiana or something that or oriana that will land a big ult and the fight is over he's kind of the same but it's not even his ult his, it's his freaking um set up for w for parallel convergence he jumps into it he stuns two people and, and the and the game ends so like given the fact how hard this champion scales uh honestly like in laning phase i would say it's like on the verge of like in between a and b but later on this champion is so strong that i, I would say that he's a to be honest and it definitely it's a matchup that i would recommend um maxing q uh, if you play properly, he he doesn't have what it takes to kill you. So there isn't there is like not a huge reason for you to you know to be e maxing in this matchup. Um, all right, Mundo Mundo is probably C. Um, this matchup is easy. Like obviously it's a top lane matchup, but this matchup is just easy. Uh, if you take lethal tempo, there isn't really a moment where Mundo is stronger than you, which is crazy. Like, early on, I think if he tries to engage on you and go into, like, a minion wave, he loses. And at level 6, he never wins, right? It's going to be hard to kill him, but he, he just never wins in, into you. In team fights, champion is completely worthless, right? He just walks around, but, like, I don't know, man. I know he's strong in low elo, but he's like, you know, all these champions that walk around and just, you know, do things, they're they're, they're strong in low elo because, you know, people are re very good at positioning in lower divisions, in, in lower ranks. <laughs> but but uh, in high, I'm sorry, man. This, I, you know, this champion, I don't see this champ at all. He's useless. If he gets Titanic, he starts hitting disgusting amount though. But like, he's gonna he's gonna get to who? Like, if I can get to people with Wither and Ghost, the champion doesn't run Ghost. He has teleport uh, Flash usually. So if I can get to anyone, pretty much, if if you know if they have the appropriate setup, if they if they're peeling, and if they're kiting, who who's the champion gonna get to? And on top of that, this champion has another problem because he gets countered extremely hard by percent damage and Bork. Really hard countered by these uh, things. So I don't know, man. He goes Ghost. All right, but then he has no flash, so he's never going to surprise someone with... I don't know, man. Uh, C tier for me, uh, period. I, I mean, I'm sorry, man. It's C tier. Um, Ezreal... Uh, from all the AD carries that you're gonna see, nah, he's too rare to, to, you know, like, whatever, man. I'm not going to put him anywhere. It's like, he's kind of similar to Fiddle. Like, you're gonna see two, three Fiddles in your lifespan. You're gonna see two, three mid lane Ezreals in your lifespan. That that's it. Like, what's the point? Uh, Fiora is S. Um, in laning phase, hmm. Yeah, good Fiora is ass. Like, let's be honest. Um, very hard to deal with her in laning phase if she knows what she's doing. 
outside of laning phase, she's one of the best duelers in the game. Uh, 1v1, it's going to be a skill matchup, actually, because you need to play properly. Uh, if you are going to hug the wall and prevent her from proccing all four uh, vitals when she ults, then you have a chance to win if you didn't get dumpstered too hard in laning phase. If she gets ahead ever, uh, you can never play the game again. Uh, she's just going to take turrets, ignore you, um, kill you in a 1v1, you will not be able to, to fight her. The worst part, if she gets something like Death Dent, because then you just start doing no damage to her, she, she overheals. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even think that the champion is... Like, right right now, as it is right now, I don't think that the champion is too strong in League of Legends. Maybe a little bit. She's just good into Nasus, that's all. Uh, Fizz, uh, I would say probably something like A. Uh, you need to be very careful into the champion in laning phase. Very careful. First, first trade at level 2 or 3 that you shouldn't take, you lose half health or something like that. And then you can never walk up to him again. You probably have to reset. Or just freaking wait until you regenerate until 70 or 75% health. Because next trade, you die. So you gotta be extremely careful against this champion in laning phase. Outside of laning phase, and later on, he probably turns into B. Closer to B, honestly. If you played laning phase well, he's not that big of a threat later on. Actually, I'm gonna put it in B. It's like, laning, laning phase is one thing, but it's important how these champions scale and how Nasus does into them later on, too. And overall, like, from, like, I I would put him in, in B tier, honestly. This champion doesn't offer that much later on in teamfights. So, I put him in B. Uh, Galio. Pff. Laning phase. Oh, and it's a Q-Max matchup, right? It's a Q-Max matchup. Uh, Fiora is... Now that's interesting because emaxing into Fiora, no never mind. If you emax into Fiora, you will get freaking obliterated later on. You will have no damage to, to deal with her. Um I would need to I don't know man. I always Q Max into Fiora, but maybe Emax would work a little bit better. I think it's she's still S tier though, to be honest. Alright, um oh, playlist stop stopped. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry for that. Um I was talking about uh, Gal uh, Galio. Where is it? Where is Galio? There he is. Uh, Galio in laning phase B, um, and I think later on he's B too. Honestly, good Galio will be more useful than you. But in melee and like you know, one once he used his ult, he doesn't offer that much. On, the, on top of that, Galio is not like meta right now. As for the current patch, which is 14.5, just you know, this tier list is, is made for that patch. Um, I think that is honestly like around B, and you probably, you probably, you should definitely Q Max into the champion. He gets a magic shield, so E Maxing into him, you will never, you, you, will, ne you, you will never poke him. So just stack your way up and just be stronger than him in melee later in in melee range later on and offer more for team in team fights. I guess that's uh, what you're supposed to do. Gangplank, oh, it's it's difficult for me to look. If you Q maxing into Gangplank, he's like A. If you're E maxing, he's B. If you're E maxing, this matchup is actually pretty easy. He's gonna get pissed off, getting poked all the time. But this champion is one of the hardest scaling champions in the game. Like with one barrel, sometimes he can just completely change the outcome of the game. He can completely win, he can win the game with one barrel sometimes, right? Late game. So I can't put this champion in B. I, I really can't. Laning phase, though, if you destroy him hard enough early on, if he for the most part doesn't know what he's doing with Emax, you can just destroy him really easily. If you have jungler that's playing for you, you will always have prior against him, always. Uh, in the beginning and you can just dive him even at level six or something so he can get destroyed in laning phase really hard if you're e-maxing if you're q-maxing if you're q-maxing honestly it's just like round a to s tier you know in laning phase he's just gonna get his sheen early and just poke you you know he's gonna outplay you with his q all the time like on top of that, this matchup pisses you off because you get constantly outplayed. 
by his Q spam, right? So, like... I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but I can never dodge his Q. This is like... This champion is my arch nemesis. I can never dodge his Q. The Gangplank players are, are like the best players on the planet, actually. They, they, they never miss. It's crazy. Alright. <laughs> uh, Garen next. Garen is going to be... Um, a Q Max matchup for sure. You need to have stacks in order to deal with him later on. Um, probably around B, honestly. I'm thinking about A. I think B is fair. I don't think that Garen offers necessarily more than you in team fights. Which, what is annoying is that. Garen is going to press Ignite and ult you for a total of 15, 16, 1700 true damage later on. But a lot of this might be mitigated by your Sterx at this point. So, I would put him in B. In laning phase, he's not necessarily super hard to deal with. At level 6, you win against him if he tries to hard engage under your turret or, or something like that. You can run him down. At level 6, you will win for sure. So, not, 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 not the worst. Nar, um, if you're E maxing into Nar, it's going to be a B tier matchup. If you're Q maxing, it's going to be A tier matchup. Um, Nar is not super popular nowadays and not necessarily super strong, but uh, he has very good teamfight potential. Uh, AoE stun into another AoE stun into slow can be sometimes devastating, especially if your team comp is bad versus him, and by that I mean immobile champions without jumps. For that reason, I'm going to put him in A tier. Uh, historically speaking, Nar was always very annoying for Nas to deal with. It's very hard to kill him, especially if he runs something like Mercs or Wither. If he runs something like Mercs, Tenacity Rune, and uh, Tenacity um, Rune Shard, uh, your Wither is going to last like two and a half seconds on him. It's it's just hard to deal with him overall. He's very annoying. He needs to be good, though. If he's not great, then it's not that big of a problem, but... Um, Gragas. Gragas is S tier. Easy. The reason why Gragas is S tier is because he's just broken. Champion is giga overpowered for patches now and Riot doesn't care. That's the problem. Uh, Gragas needs to just... I don't know, like... You saw, for example, from last game. Like, we were the same level. He has 12 armor more. We both have zero armor items. Same level. He has... 12 armor more. When I had like 70, he, he had 82. This is ridiculous. This is just... There is no reason why a mage like that should have this much armor compared to Juggernaut, a melee champion. I mean, this guy is melee too, but he's like technically a mage, right? It's very high AP scaling, so we can definitely consider him a mage. Just... just Normally, I would put him in A tier, maybe even B, no, in normal circumstances. If this was like, for example, like last season 2, when he wasn't overpowered and we had Sunder, I would put him in B probably. Right now, he's S tier. He's overstat like... <laughs> he's overstat, boys. Period. Gr uh, Draven, you're basically never going to see him in lane. Graves also no. Uh, Gwen A tier. Uh, it's a hard ma You're supposed to Q max 100% into this matchup. She's a hard matchup and she scales really hard. Arguably outscales Nasus. Arguably in a one v one late game, depending on like. It, it, it's it's also depends if she has ignite or not. But late game, it, it it's it's ridiculous. But it's actually very close. It, the the one v one against the champion late game is going to be very close. Depending on if she has Ignite and how many stacks you have. But it's it's crazy. Like, she, she beats Nasus. She beats a quote-unquote hyperscaling juggernaut. Infinite, excuse me. In, this is this is what people use, right? Like, on Reddit. Infinitely scaling champion. She just beats me. Right? Or, or it's going to be insanely close. So, um, A tier, honestly, could be S in some cases as well. But, like, she got nerfed some time ago. So, like, be before the nerf, S tier. Right now, probably something like A+. Plus. Champion is Giga Strong, man. Um, Hecarim, no. Heimer, I haven't seen him in lane for such a long time. That being said, Heimer is B. 
Uh, Heimer is a very easy matchup if you're E-maxing. If you're Q-maxing, I would probably put him in S. Outside of laning phase, he's prob probably around A. But in laning phase, if you're E-maxing, he's probably going to be B. If you're E-maxing, you, you can just kill his turrets very, very easily. Um, he's going to get poked out. His only ability to push lanes is pretty much using the turrets. Because his other abilities don't push the waves really great, uh, re really, really amazingly well. Um, and if you destroy him early, then he kind of loses his potential and value later on. So I feel like overall, like right now, honestly, if you're going to see Heimer in top lane, for example, I'd say he's B. He's not a big threat, honestly. Ilaoi, now, ooh, that's going to be an interesting one, guys. So, Ilaoi. Alright, look. There are so many variables in this matchup. Like first of all, I definitely recommend to Qmax into this into this champion, into this matchup. Number one thing, for sure. You can get very high amount of stacks in this matchup because you can stack tentacles too. So whatever your wave is next is not next to you. You just walk up walk up to a tentacle, you auto attack plus Q, you get extra stacks, and then the wave comes towards you and you, you, you just keep on pressing Q into this matchup. The problem is, this is a very skill-oriented matchup. So, like, if you're really good at dodging her ability abilities or she's bad at landing them, this matchup is, like, B, maybe C. Because you're just stacking for free, you get ridiculous stacks, like, at level 7, you just run her down. And she dies, and at this point... She never re really reaches reaches a situ situation when she's going to be useful in the game because you always win side lane. If you dodge majority of her abil abilities and you can just stack freely, if she's good or you are, it's not your day when it comes to dodging. Then she turns into S tier because you'll just ke just keep on getting chunked over and over and over again, and you'll keep on losing farm under turret. And then she's gonna be stronger than you in melee range. She's just gonna ignore you, keep on pushing turrets, just be a silent threat, and you will never be able to fight her. It's gonna be a huge problem. So I don't know where to put her, to be honest. It it she turns from like from like C B, depending on how laning phase goes, to to possibly S. It can be any of those. Depending on how you play and she plays. So I'll be honest, guys. I don't know where to put her. I'm gonna put her in A, I guess. Like, like kind of like in the middle, right? <laughs> I, I guess, I, I guess, putting her in an appropriate tier is going to be very hard. You just need to follow my explanation on, on how this matchup works, and, and that's it. Uh, Jarvan, very, very rare to see in laning phase. Uh. But if you're gonna lane against him, I guess he's like B. At levels, you gotta be careful early. Early on, he's gonna do a lot of damage if you eat EQ plus auto attacks. Other than that, if you play the laning phase well, he you outscale him at level six, and he never will be able to fight you again. I would say something like B probably. Yeah. Uh, Jax is most likely A tier. Uh, it's another Q max matchup. Uh, and Jax is... I wouldn't put him in S. But I think that A is fair. Um, the reason why I am not going to put him in S is because if you play in laning phase well enough and you don't fall too behind, you have room where you are stronger than Jax. And I think that 6 item versus 6 item, it's going to be kind of close, but I think that Nasus has the edge. Um... Nasus definitely had the edge when Sander was in the game. Nowadays, it's just kind of like... It's like, he has stronger early, but, but outside of early, it's like, you're kind of like, even like... In 1v1, if he just jumps into you, you can kill him. But the problem is that how slippery the champion is. He just has ridiculously short cooldown on his Q uh, later on. And if he doesn't have Q available, then he has E available. It's like, you can never freaking hit him. He just needs to make a mistake for you to kill him, but at the same time, he can't really kill you if you play properly. I think I'm A is extremely fair. 
A plus. Something like A plus would be fair. Jace? Hmm. I'll be honest, might be surprising to some of you. I'll, I'm gonna put Jace in B. Uh, I think that Jace is kind of similar to Corky, but I think that he's... Does this Jace scale harder than Corky? It's hard to say, but he's kind of like Corky, but he's stronger early. It's similar in that way, but like he's stronger early. He's not like just a free lane like Corky early on. But you can run him down equally easily at level 6, level 7. Now, outside of that, he never wins 1v1s versus you. Um, so you can abuse him very easily. Um, if he's good, he, he's going to have phase rush and he will poke you out. And every time he, the phase rush is on cooldown, he's not going to walk up to you. And it's going to be a bigger threat. I'm talking about like GM plus Jace players. But uh, like especially for low, lower elos, this should be B, maybe even C tier matchup. Like, low elo Jace players they will just be freaking praying that you kill them. They will be out of position constantly, guys. Constantly, all the time. Um, Kassadin is a B tier matchup. It's one of the easiest matchups in the game in laning phase. The reason why this matchup is bad is because he scales incredibly, incredibly hard. Level 16 with items, he can just wipe your team out uh, if the game lasts this long. Overall... I would put him in B because the game needs to last this long for you to, uh, for him to like be this strong, right? And that's not always the case. Uh, but as as the laning phase um, goes, it's an easy matchup for sure. If this, if if we were only talking about laning phase, then it would be C. But the reason, but 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 um, you know, he scales really hard, so so I'm I'm gonna put him in B. Overall, I, th I think that is, that's a uh, fair, fair placement. Um, Kaiza, pff. Kaiza mid was a thing for a little bit. It's completely dead now. Nobody plays that, so I'm not gonna put her anywhere. Kalista, now that's a little bit more popular. I would say Kalista. Personally, I don't see her either. Right. But, this was thing in the past, and she's technically viable as a solo laner, technically. I would put Kalista in B tier. Uh, Q-maxing into this matchup is going, to be, is going to be miserable, but if you're E-max, if you're going to E-max, it's going to be easy. Um, she's, she's just going to get poked out, and it's going to be fine. Then you have Wither later on to you know, counter Kalista really hard. Uh, I think overall B, something like this. Uh, Cartus, solo lane, nah. Uh, Katarina, B. Uh, easy in laning phase, very easy. Uh, free stack lane. She can never kill you. She can never do a lot of damage to you. If you're not standing on top of her daggers, you're going to be fine. Uh, the only problem with this champion is that later on, if your teammates are bad, she's going to get a lot of triple quadra kills. Uh, but we're not talking about your... You're, we're not talking about teammates here. We're talking about Katarina. And when it comes to Katarina versus Nasus, it's a kind of easy matchup. Uh, the only problem with this champion is that she's going to one-shot waves and roam. Which we need to include in this rating as well. Uh, this is why she's not C. But overall, easy. Laning phase, easy. 1v1s, always easy. She never wins 1v1s versus Nasus. So, like, as far as laning phase goes, it will be C. But the, her roaming potential and pentakill potential... If if I will, um, puts her in B, if if you will. Um, Kale. Now this is interesting. Some people might be shocked because Kale used to be the best matchup for Nasus. Period. Um, Kale is is a weird champion. She is easy for Nasus early on, very easy in laning phase. Until level 6. Since level 6, Kale becomes a ranged champion and she buys Swifties. Swifties are very overpowered nowadays. They should provide less um, movement speed or less uh, slow reduction or they should cost more. That being said, Swifties are very strong. Uh, good Kale will, will Q-Max into Nasus and get Swifties, 
with the right setup, you will never get to her. Never. After level, you, you, you're never gonna kill the champion. I guarantee you that. She doesn't even need phase rush for that. You will never kill this champion in 1v1. It's never gonna happen. And guess what? This champion scales unbelievably hard. This is like, she's kind of like casted into the level 16, man. She, she scales incredibly hard. The worst part about this champion is that, is that she can go full damage. She moves around with 600 movement speed uh, when her W is up. Uh, and she has damage immunity for like 3 seconds or whatever. That does massive AoE damage on top of that. So, champion is in laning phase, she will never die to you. And outside of laning phase, she scales like a monster. I'm, I'm gonna put Kale in, in A. There's only one way you can where, where, you, where you can win this lane really hard. If you're emaxing, she's gonna get you're gonna bleed her out really hard because she has very low magic resistance. If you emax, you can just keep on punishing her, and with your jungler, you can dive her before she hits six, or maybe after even after uh, after that. If you're really ahead, she can be abused really hard by emax. If you have a jungler, or if she's you know if she's bad, you can dive her by yourself, but. But if you're Q max, you will never kill her early, and then she's gonna outscale you. So it's it, it's tough. It's she's she's tough, guys. Sorry, I need to drink some water. Oh, I don't have water here. Uh, how about we're gonna do a 20 second break? I'm gonna get some water because we'll be talking for a long time, and I, you know I, I need to drink something. So <laughs> be right back, guys. Next up, Kane is unbelievably rare, so I'm, we're not going to raid him. Very occasionally you can see Kane top lane, but it's just too rare for him to be relevant. Uh, to be re uh, for it to be relevant, and for this matchup to be relevant. Uh, Kanan A tier. Uh, Kanan is a lane bully. Uh, this matchup probably becomes a B tier matchup outside of laning phase. But he's actually hold on. Actually, I would put him probably in B. Cannon has one weakness. Uh, he's very strong in team fights, and he can definitely turn the team fights around and games around with his ult if he gets a good flank with his TP. But the problem with Cannon is that he gets outscaled in a one v one unbelievably hard. You can have a pretty free laning phase against him if you Emax early, which is going to be pretty much B tier difficulty so not too hard and outside of that if they decide to send him to to match you in the side lane you can just dive him if you know what where everyone is it's incredibly easy to dive the champion it's very squishy he he is yes he can chain stun you but his stunts are not too long because he's like he has amazing aoe but single target he's like you know whatever I would put him in B, honestly. If you if you want to Qmax into him, I would say A. Very hard to deal with. But Emax, B. And obviously, he, he can be played in mid lane and, and top lane both, right? Uh, Kha'Zix, no, no. Kled is uh, S tier. Uh, good luck. Just good luck playing as the champion. Uh, it's a top tier. It's a top lane matchup. You're not going to see him in mid lane, really. In mid lane, it becomes easier, by the way. In, in mid lane, in general, every matchup is, is easier. But, but in top lane, uh, it's in incredibly easy for Kled to set up dives with any jungler. Because he's just going to start tanking and then the aggro automatically swaps to a jungler. You know, assuming that you're still alive after 3 seconds of him tanking. Uh, he is very dangerous early. Uh, he can poke you down really fast if you're not careful. Uh, even worse if he has ignite. You need to be really careful not to get solo die, uh, solo dove. Um, I asked you honestly. 
he's dangerous outside of laning phase because if he latches on your AD carry, like they they will instantly get freaking 100 to zero. He is good engage. His ult is a very good engage tool. It's 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 rough. You you e maxing is not that great into him either. Because like what you, I mean, e maxing might be better to be honest, but I don't know. But the thing is that he's really healthy, right? He has a lot of health. Assuming him and his ostrich. So he, if you're E-maxing, he's going to be... In both Q-max and E-max, he's going to be like sitting in between you and the wave. And if you hit him with E, that he's he's going to say... Oh, nice. He's not, even, he's not even going to feel it that much. So I would say S tier, to be honest. I don't know. Some of you might disagree, but I would say S tier matchup. Asante, uh, I'm gonna surprise you boys, but um, his 317 armor, 4700 health, airborne, freaking blah 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 blah. Champion is gonna be in B tier. Uh, the champion does very little damage early on. At level 6, he loses to you. If he presses his ult to like pull you over the, the wall or something like that, you just press R and he, he dies. Um, early on, with lethal tempo, if he, he's not careful, he can actually die early to you. If he's gonna feel too confident. He doesn't do much damage early. It's a free stack lane. Uh, later on, outside of laning phase, you need to give him a good angle for him to be super useful. I think this champion honestly just got nerfed enough, so that he's not a big threat anymore. Uh, and he doesn't work necessarily, necessarily well into Nasus either, because Nasus just is stronger in melee than, than this this champ and Sante doesn't do a lot of damage early on either so I wouldn't put him quite in C tier because good Sante can be dangerous but I'm defi definitely not putting this champion in A tier he's like easy matchup honestly honestly easy matchup boys um hold on we're, we're, okay we're here uh, LeBlanc Overall, I'm going to put it in, put her in A. I was thinking about S, but the reason why I'm gonna put it in A is because she doesn't, in my opinion, scale that hard. Honestly, nowadays she doesn't scale that hard. It's not like Vayne from season. Uh, it's not LeBlanc from season four when Faker was doing, you know, big big plays like just one shotting people with a death fire grasp and stuff like that right it's not the same champ anymore now that being said this sh this matchup is incredibly annoying to deal with um e maxing makes it way better you could try to q max into the champion too with fleet just go maximum sustain fleet doran shield and second wind and a potion level one and I think Q maxing is possible in the, into this champ. You, in general, like you should, you probably shouldn't run lethal tempo against her. You should go fleet. But E maxing makes this match easier because you can actually put, put, push her out of lane. She has no sustain whatsoever. But uh, the laning phase is still very bad, and uh, you can never reach her uh, outside of laning phase. Later in team fights, it's impossible to reach this champion. So she's very, very annoying to deal with. But she's not that hard. She's definitely not S tier. Definitely not. And if 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 I wanted to compare her to Azir, something like Azir, like Azir is definitely closer to S than than LeBlanc, for example. Azir is like harder than than LeBlanc for sure overall. But uh, she definitely doesn't deserve B. Good LeBlanc will be huge pain in the S. Huge. So. I think this is fair. Uh, Lee Sin, no, 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 there's no way. Lee Sin is Lee Sin, Lee Sin in mid lane or top lane is too rare for 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 me to even rate this matchup. Liana, no. Lilia, no. Absolutely no. Lilia, I, I think I've seen one lane Lilia in my life. That's it. Uh, Lissandra, a tier. Lissandra is a hard lane and she has a, a lot of value later on. Uh, Lissandra is like, yeah. Honestly, I'm thinking about putting Azir in S tier. The fact that you even if you're E-maxing, you don't win this lane because he just farms from a distance. And he scales really hard. I'm, I'm putting a zero in S tier. Like, putting him in A tier is just... I don't know. 
a bad idea. Lissandra definitely A. Um, she is hard in lane. If you're Q maxing, she's very hard. Then if you're E maxing, it gets better. But you know, as always, you lose scaling. Uh, you don't scale as hard, not as quickly. Uh, Lissandra is very strong in team fights. It's in borderline impossible to kill her solo in lane. We, even with jungler, it's hard to kill her. Um, a tier matchup, so, solid A tier, by the way, solid A tier. Um, Lulu. Nowadays, nobody plays her in lane. Nobody. In the past, they did. If they played her, if they played her in mid lane now or top lane, I would put her in B. Um, I don't think if you run sustained setup, she is what it takes to push you out of lane or like, you know, do enough damage to stop your you from stacking. And then she's just like a support later on. I would say probably B, something like that. I think it's fair. Uh, Lux, A tier matchup. Uh, this is a must have. You need to Emax into this matchup. You're gonna get poked out so freaking hard if you're Q maxing. Like the Q maxing is borderline S tier, S tier matchup. But if you're gonna Q max, it's borderline S tier. If you're gonna Emax, the matchup turns probably to like B. You're just gonna both farm for the most part, right? That's how it's gonna look like. And later on, I guess she's. Not, I'm gonna put her in B, honestly. J just, just keep in mind if you're Q maxing into this matchup, she's S tier. Other than that, she's B. Just because she's not like Giga strong right now. If she was Giga strong, very meta, and and she was played a lot, then it will, she would be A tier. Just because you know, she's strong into mid game, late game. But since she's not really that insane, I would say right now. And B. Don't Q Max into this shit. Please just don't do it. <laughs> Alright, Malphite, uh, B. Um, you know. What can you say about Rocky, man? Rocky is a simple champion, man. You just walk up and you farm. And he walks up and he presses his abilities on you. And then you just walk back and then you just wait until your Q comes back and you just walk up and you farm. Uh, later on. He has very powerful ult that is possi possibly a game changer, but in laning phase, this matchup is free. You just you're just stacking, right? Uh, later on, you can very easily. I could definitely very easily see a situation when in a side lane, he's busy clearing the wave when you just take the turret and ignore him. Uh, so in laning phase, in 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 side lane, uh, you do well into him. In team fights, he needs to land a multiple man ult. For him to be more useful than you, Malphite is just this champion was not made to counter Nasus, that's for sure. So <laughs> I'm gonna put him over here. Malzahar, I do believe, is just going to going going to be a solid A tier. Um, where is Irelia going to go? We're gonna get there, man. <laughs> oh, this is why you said it because I just I didn't see her and I didn't see Karma either. What am I? Am I blind? Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I'm gonna finish talking about uh, Mazahar. Mazahar is a tier because of how annoying he is. In laning phase, in general, this matchup is B tier, borderline C. But he does insane amounts of damage as he scales. That's number one problem. Number two problem, he buys Rylice. Rylice is one of the biggest Nasus counter in the game, combined with Bork. These are two items that if, if you if you see these items on enemy team, you're just freaking you you're not in a good mood, right? Um and on top of that, it's probably not a he he kind of forces you like he this is the champion that prevents you from carrying. It's very annoying. If you're if you're strong and your team sucks, if you want to carry the game. If you see this champion, you're forced to buy QSS. You don't have a choice. Because he just hits R on you, your team is useless, right? He hits R, and that's it. You're just dead. You're just standing still. You can't reduce that. Like He he does massive amount of damage in the meantime with his Leandries and everything. Then you get perma slowed by his Rhylice. It's very annoying to deal with him. Um, in laning phase, super easy. Outside of laning phase, the champion is very strong, honestly. He's not very strong. He hunters Nas is very hard. Is what I'm trying to say. So I would put him in A. 
And he's never gonna... If he plays well, that's the problem. He, if he plays well, he's never gonna die to you, ever. Because of his, like, shield thingy and stuff. So, um... Yeah, it's... I'm gonna put it in A. Like, some people might disagree. Like, I'm thinking for a second about B tier, but... I just... I don't know, man. Leandri's Rylice combined with his ult. So freaking... Such a pain in the ass to deal with. Really? Um... More... Uh, okay, we have Irelia. Irelia... The thing is that this matchup, the difficulty of this matchup changes. Definitely a Q matchup, but a Q max matchup, by the way. Don't E max into this champion. Um, it's irrelevant. She's gonna heal, and it's just, it's gonna be a disaster. You need you need damage. You need to be you need to have your Q maxed in order to deal with her when you can't do it, like level seven, something like that. But this matchup changes a lot, depending if it's mid lane or top lane. In top lane. I would say that this is like A close to S tier when it comes to difficulty. In mid lane, it's B close to A tier. So it, it changes. Uh, outside of laning phase, this 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 character is like B, honestly. Uh, you always outscale her. She doesn't stand a chance against you in a 1v1. You just outstat her, that's it. In team fights, it's not necessarily the best team fighting champion in the game. Um, Wither counters her quite hard. On top of that, uh, overall, I would say that she's at ground B. Uh, in top lane, closer to A, but in mid lane, it's just straight up B. Not a big deal, to be honest. Gotta be careful early. If you mess up early, it's going to be a pain in the ass for sure. What is this tier list? It's a nastiest tier list. Uh, all the matchups in the game. Uh, and what you're supposed to max versus particular matchups. Everything explained. <clears throat> Mordekaiser. Mm, B. Solid B. You're only, only going to see him in top lane. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you Q max into him. Uh, number three, if you juke at least some of his abilities, he just doesn't have damage to, to be a huge threat. And number four, he gets outscaled in 1v1s. This matchup is only a problem when you can't juke anything and you're bad at spacing. And he will push you out of out, out of lane early and he's going to get advantage. At this point, you might reach the situation with level 7, level 8, level 9. You don't, you don't even beat him if you mess up. And then it's going to be a problem. But other than that, I would say B is very, very fair for Mordekaiser to, to put him in B tier. Um, Karma. I missed her before. Karma is like Lulu, but she does much more damage. She's A. Period. Karma is kind of like Lulu, but she does much, much, much more damage. Because someone really smart at Riot just overbuffed her damage uh, like two patches ago or something like this. So, um, yeah, it's 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 very simple. It's it's A tier matchup. Uh, I would recommend Q maxing into this. It's going to be pain in the ass. Probably You should probably run Fleet into her. But, um... Q Max, Karma, like she's gonna shield your damage if you're gonna E Max. Yes, you will be able to get probably more farm, but you're gonna have way less damage at like level seven in like extended traits, because your Q will not be maxed. Your Q Q will be level one, so you do li literally negative damage outside of E. So I'll probably go Q Max into into Karma. Other than that, she's very similar to Lulu. Just you know, she does 50% more damage. She's more annoying. Um, yes, this is the tier list. Um, next. I didn't miss a any other laner after that, right? I mean, we have Ivern, right? There's, there, there's Ivern, uh, uh, Rivern, excuse me. This guy plays Ivern top, but nah. We're, we're good, man. We're good. Uh, Lucian for sure. Lucian is like... All right, look. If you play Lucian, if you play, if you if you Q max into Lucian, it's an S tier matchup. You can't really do that, right? You're gonna get just punished too hard. If you E max into him, it's probably closer to B. Outside of laning phase, 
if you played laning phase well and you, you didn't fall behind, he's still probably B. So overall, I'm going to put him in B. If you feel like being desperate, you can Q max into him. He turns into ass, but but if you E max, then he, you should be fine against him. Uh, Misfortune, not a solo lane. Morgana, not a solo lane. Nafiri. Nafiri is like B. I'm, I'm, I, I would be even considering putting her in C, like no cap. Nafiri doesn't do enough damage if you juke any of her of her uh, Qs or Es, whatever it is. This ability that she can recast, um, if you dodge the second cast or even the first one, it 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 just doesn't do enough damage to push you out of lane. So this is the freest one of the freest lane of lanes of all time. On top of that, if she over engages and she jumps into minions, you can wither, and there's a good possibility that you can kill her even before six. Um, if you're lacking minions to stack, there's her dogs. <laughs> you can always freaking stack them up. Uh, in laning, it's 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 currently one of the easiest laning phase phases in the game, from all the champions. Like you know, on par with with these pretty much. Um, outside of laning phase, she's a bigger problem. Uh, if she is smart, she's just going to ignore any confrontation with you, push the lane as quickly as possible, and try to use her mobility to roam. And also, she can one-shot someone very quickly in team fights. She she gets more value in team fights. I feel like. So this is why I'm not going to put it in, in her in. This is why I'm not going to put her in C tier. But I think B is very fair for this champion. It's just that the laning phase against this champ is incredibly easy. So easy. Like it's so hard to mess it up. You're also stronger in one v one in one v ones at any point in the game. She never beats you, never, unless she's Giga head, G Giga fed. But um, yeah, Nasus now. <laughs> this is the the worst champion in the game in high elo, guys. So, like, unironically, like if we're, if if I can talk about Nasus for a second, like Nasus is the worst champion in the game, uh, in high elo, like actually. I'm going to find fight anyone that says otherwise, like in, in comments or like on, on in Twitch chat. Like if if you want to show me, all right, maybe not the worst, but like he's like solid top three worst champions in the game in high elo. Uh, if you want to if you want to show me more than three champions that are worse than Nasus in high elo, feel please feel free to do so. Serious, ser seriously, like after we after they removed Sunder, our core item that was probably the best item that Nasus has ever had. In, in me, 14 years of me playing this game, I've never seen better item than Sunder for Nasus. Then Stoneplate, pretty much same as Sunder. Also, the best tank item in the game, removed. Then they nerfed Tenacity. Then they removed Unflinching, which is nerfing Tenacity and Slow Resistance. Then they nerfed Little Tempo. Then they nerfed Sustain. They nerfed Potions. Like, we can just keep on going. Then they double nerfed Frozen Heart now. Uh, we can just keep on going how hard Nasus got hit in the past months. It's just, it, it's still, I could talk about it for 10 minutes, it still wouldn't do it justice. So, um, now I know that uh, it will be impressive for for you to find Nasus in the ranked game when you're playing Nasus. That would be impressive, I have to say. If anyone has screen of Nasus playing into Nasus in, in the ranked game, please share. But other than that, um, yeah, I mean, it's like the worst champion in the game, like, period. Like, I don't know, man. Like, like imagine like having this super hard scaling, scaling champion that gets outscaled. Like, look at the amount of S tier A. Like, majority of the, of, the, of these champions just straight up outscale you. They're stronger. You're supposed to be strong late. Late. That's why you're so weak early. But you're weaker than them late. It's like, what's the point of even playing this? I guess I'm sucker for stacks. I don't know. Nautilus, no. Nico, ooh. Alright, Nico, if you Q-Max, if you Q-Max, this is like a mid lane, sometimes top lane matchup. Uh, Nico, if you Q-Max, is impossible. You can't play the game. Uh... He's like on par with Anivia, like Azir, 
some uh, like something like that. Just you just don't play the game if you Q max. The only th thing you can do is to E max versus her. That being said, if you E max, this matchup becomes better because. She has a lot of teamfight potential with her turning to minions and stuff like that, flanking, his, his, her, her ult is very strong if used properly. But it's playable if you Emax, it's gonna be fine. You can play the game. You can farm, you can poke her down, uh, maybe even win the lane if you if you play super well. She's like not super great, amazing. Uh, overall, I would put it in A because she still has amazing potential she can roam easily this the changing changing to like other objects is uh, is a problem uh for many players because you just don't like it's only one champion that does that in the game you don't even like you know unless you're super focused you don't even like see like you don't even think about it right it's just many people many many people me included for just forget that she might be somewhere like hiding as a minion and stuff like that so Overall, like I would say, A is very fair. Nautilus, no. Nearly, no, 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 no. Although I, s you could see him very rarely in top lane. There, there was a time where you could see him in top lane, actually quite often. But uh, honestly, if I was to rank the champion, if if the Nocturne top meta is ever going to come back, I would, I would put him in C. I think. Champ you need to mess up really hard for him to beat you really hard in laning phase. Top lane is not the best place for him to be on top of that because he can just ult like where? He can ult mid lane. He's not going to go to bot lane, right? You beat him in extremely hard at 6. He doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, I mean, like... But, but like, I'm not going to put him there because nobody plays him in, in solo lane. Nobody. Master Yi also nobody plays in solo lane. Obviously, Master Yi um, counters Nasus really hard, but n like not in lane, so it's whatever. Um, uh, Olaf uh, S tier, like this is just easy peasy S tier. Uh, if you Emax into this champion, it doesn't give you anything besides the fact that you can just get some more farm, but you're gonna get outscaled even harder. If you Q Max into this champion, the laning phase is very hard. Um, it's playable laning phase is playable but it's very hard the reason why he's an s tier is because a early early game is very hard mid game is very hard if you fall behind and if you if you fail behind and if he is good you will and late game is very hard he's argu arguably he's stronger stronger in team fights than you are at every point in the game he's stronger than you Like, he's better at split pushing because he one shots waves. He's better at early. He's better at mid. He's better at late. He's better at skirmishes. He offers more value in the one in 2v2s with your jungler. In top lane. Like, 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 literally, it's just like. There isn't a single thing that you are better at than, than Olaf. The, the only thing that you, you can have on him if you're better at the game. <laughs> if you're better at the game, cool. Nice. But other than that, this is just a the champion is straight up stronger, man. This is what it is. Oriana, I would put a in, in solid A. Um, Oriana was like giga popular with Syndra last season, uh, and these both of these champions were not nerfed for the longest time. Um, that brought a lot of bad Oriana and Syndra players. That unironically made this this matchup not that bad. But if you're eventually going to find a good Oriana, it's going to be a very very hard matchup. If you're going to Qmax into this champion, it's arguably going to be an S tier matchup because she's just going to poke you down and zone you off farm so hard, it's going to be impossible to play. Uh, if you're going to Emax, uh, she's getting closer to, to A tier because you will, you, will be, you will be able to farm, right? And outside of landing phase, I would say that after nerfs, she's also like around A. Uh, she can have very game changing ults if your team is not careful. But other than that, I would say like probably A is fair against her. If if, if you Emax versus her, the laning phase difficulty is around B or A, and overall she's a strong champion. So like I feel like A is like perfect for her, honestly. If you're gonna Q Max though, she goes to to S tier. If you're gonna play against a really good Oriana player, S, she, you, you can't against a good Oriana player you can't Q Max. You're gonna lose the game so fast. 
You're not, you're not even going to notice where you lost. She's gonna get CS lead, she's gonna zone you off farm, then she's gonna roam, she's gonna help her jungler because you have you never have prio and you lost the game. Emax, A tier. Alright, um next we have Orn. Orn is only a top lane matchup. Orn I would put in the A tier, uh easy. Easy A tier. Uh, a tier is perfect for him. He's not like super insane uh in laning phase. But he can poke you down very easily. It's one of the highest damage tanks in the game. Uh, and then he just provides more value than, than Nasus, like, everywhere, right? He can upgrade t items for his team. He has massive amount of CC. He's insanely tanky. He's just, like, better champion than Nasus pretty much at everything. Like, you know, you, you can split, split push better. That's it. That's the only thing that Nasus is better than Orn. But other than that, A tier... Honestly, if he was meta, and by meta I mean if he was like strong, strong, if this was a 52% win rate champion, I would put him in S. No cap. I would put him in S because of how just how much better of a champion he is. On on, on every platform, on every in every metric. But since he's not like broken right now, then I think A is fair. Um, Rek'Sai is okay. Hold on. I went too far. Nunu, no. Pantheon, uh, I'll be honest. Um, Alright, so if you Q-Max into him, it's again the same same story. If you Q-Max into him, S-tier matchup. Borderline unplayable. He has insane amounts of damage. He doesn't... In the past, he used to be a huge lane bully. But... But he used to fall off really hard. Kind of like Lee Sin. I remember in early seasons when Lee Sin players were doing basically nothing, right? Late game they were doing negative damage. They're just going tank, and because like if you go if you go damage, you're just useless, right? You, whatever, right? You don't. You, they they weren't even doing that much damage going full AD, and if they if they did, they were get, getting one shot. So Pantheon used to be kind of the same. He used to fall off really hard. Nowadays, he doesn't fall off because of all the changes and like blah blah blah, itemization, never-ending power creep. Pantheon scales really hard. Uh, to the point where he can just literally one-shot people later on. Uh, and, you know, if he's a lane bully at the same time, that kind of pro that kind of creates a problem. <laughs> but, um, if you Q-Max into this champion, it's an S-tier matchup. If you E-Max, he changes into B. It's way better to emax into the champion he can poke get poke, get poked out really really easily just don't walk up too close to him be careful be good at spacing and it turns into a b tier matchup overall he's still a tier because he ha he has insane potential with his ult uh in insane roaming potential right uh he can you know ult top ult bot ult back to lane not to lose any farm so he's not gonna fall behind early um, just very strong. I think it's, this champion is really underrated. It's very, very strong. Very strong. Um, next up, we have Kiana. I would put her in A. I think A is very fair. Uh, if this was... This is a Q-Max matchup. If you were supposed to... Um, if you were supposed to... Um, um, E-Max... I mean, it makes no sense, really. It makes no sense. Because the matchup is very easy. When it comes to matchup itself, laning phase, this is a B tier matchup. She can't really do... If you play properly, she can't really do anything to you in laning phase. She just doesn't have what it takes. Especially now that the bushes are, are farther away, so it's not as easy for her to be permanently invisible. So if she wants to get her invisibility, she needs to walk... Um, a little bit away from minions, and this is your time to to get auto attack or two auto attacks plus Q heal up back again. It's like in laning phase, it's like B tier. It's she's not a big deal, but due to how annoying she is, permanent invisibility is amazing, amazing thing in League of Legends. By the way, we should have more of it. I think more champions with perma permanent invisibilities, guys. Definitely need need it in my opinion. And how strong her ult can be and engage. Overall, it's an A tier matchup. Uh, she can do a lot, a, a lot more than you later on. She she can. Uh, in match in laning phase though, it's B. 
she, she, she's like... She can kill you only with a jungler, really. Uh, Alright, next up, Rama... Uh, okay, we have uh, Poppy. Poppy is a very easy A tier. Uh, Poppy is very very annoying for Nasus to deal with. Uh, Poppy is very tanky. She destroys you really hard early on, which is problem number one. Problem number two, you can never kill her outside of, um, you know... After six, when even if you're stronger than her, you can't kill her ever. She presses R, you're, you're gone. Unless you just play insanely well, you just flash her ult, and then you have still what it takes to kill her after that. Which you probably won't, by the way. Especially if she rush, rushes Tabis or something like that. Uh, then she's arguably more useful than you in team fights. It's an easy A, A tier. Very hard matchup overall. In laning phase and outside of laning phase. Um, Quinn. Quinn, if you Q max, it's going to be a theme at this point. If you Q max, Quinn is S. It's, it's close to impossible to play into Quinn if you're Q maxing. Um, into a good one. If you're E maxing, it's B. And overall, I honestly wouldn't even put her in A tier, even though she can roam very easily. I would put her in B. Quinn in team fights, in my opinion, versus Nasus is extremely weak. What counters her really hard, depending on what build she's gonna go. If she goes lethality, she will maybe do some damage to you. If she goes crit, she will be she will be doing no damage at all. You you get Renduance into something like double AD carry because Quinn let, let us, let's say that Quinn is top lane, and you have still they have still an AD carry in bot lane. It's an easy Renduance. And both of these guys, like Quinn, will just not be doing damage to you. You get double armor item or something like that, and you can, on top of that, you can wither her. And the in the laning phase, if you're e maxing into this matchup, is also pretty easy. Uh, if you play like a human, <laughs> that is. Um, I would say B. Qu Quinn is like. She's not also very strong right now. It's not like season uh, seven when when Tyler one was getting uh, freaking rank six or seven with Quinn. Right, it's it's not the same thing anymore. Um, next up, we have Renekton. Renekton is A tier. Renekton is one of the hardest matchups in laning phase in the game. If he runs the appropriate setup, I would say that he's very comparable to Kled. They're, they're kind of comparable. They both jump into you and just unleash the combo and deal massive amounts of damage and then they just jump back and then you get dove under turret and then you die, right? The, both matchups look very similar. But the difference between Kled and Renekton is that outside of laning phase, I feel like Kled is still more useful and a better champion overall, harder to deal with. Especially if you give him remount. If you don't have damage to, to kill him in team fights to, and you give him remount, this is, this is, mad, this is massive. Renekton doesn't scale that hard. Uh, I feel like if Renekton goes damage, uh, he always loses to Nasus. He just gets outscaled. If he goes tank, you can't really do much to him, but he also doesn't do much uh, in team fights later on. Um, in laning phase, it's an S tier matchup. In in uh, like overall, I would say A. In, in comparison, uh, no, no, not in comparison, like a combination of everything. It's like A tier. I think it's totally fair. Um, I wonder how Emaxing would work into this champion, because I didn't even think about it. Emaxing could be fine against him, to be honest, because Emaxing in general is like, if you really need damage in some par particular matchups, Emaxing is going to be bad, like against something like Fiora, for example, because you're gonna, when you need damage, you're not gonna have it, and you went even in laning phase, and then you just get outscaled. But the thing is with Renekton is, even if you Emax. He still gets outscaled. He just doesn't scale that that much, that that well. So I think that A is perfect. I honestly can't say if Emaxing would be much better than Q Max. Probably, probably yes. But yeah. Uh, Rengar, if you see Rengar, obviously not mid lane. If you see Rengar top, it's an S two matchup. Um, Rengar in general is a champion that is. Ex I mean, like it's like hidden OP top in my opinion. Sorry, I'm gonna drink some water. Because I'm starting to lose my voice. 
Rengar is a matchup that is unbelievably hard to deal with for Nasus. It doesn't matter if you're E-maxing, it really doesn't. Um, Q-max, E-max, this matchup, you will lose. Outside of laning phase, uh, he's going to ult and after he killed you in lane many times, I'm just kidding, right? After 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 he won his lane, he will win his lane no matter what. After he did that, he will just uh, press R, roam somewhere, make give his team advantage. Um, he gets outscaled later, later. He doesn't win versus Nasus in the 1v1, which is his only weakness. But uh, good luck killing him the moment he gets like some health or like death dance or something like that. Good luck killing him with his W. Like a cleanse. He can pretty much cleanse whatever he wants. So uh, you're not gonna get to him. Um, you're, not, you're, not, you're not gonna kill him. He's just gonna walk away. So uh, overall, S tier. One of the hardest matchups in lane. When it comes to laning phase, one of the hardest matchups ever, really. Unbelievably broken in top lane. I think that the Rengar overall, the Rengar top is hidden OP in top lane, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ramis, I mean, who plays that top? <laughs> uh, Rek'Sai, um, Riven, Riven is next. I have difficulties putting this champion in S just because she loses 1v1s later on. Laning phase obviously very hard into Riven, but the thing is that there is a massive, massive difference between the best Riven players in it. You know, in, in the game, and the just master grandmaster ribbon players, there is huge difference. This champion just gets much much stronger with every little piece of skill and ability that you will add that that player has. She just jumps very fast, up up up. So uh, I'm gonna put it in an A overall because. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that n n none of my viewers will ever see freaking, you know, like, Alois or like, uh, you know, um, uh, Viper or like, you know, Adrian or, or someone like someone like that in, in, in solo queue, right? Like, th this is when this, this matchup becomes S tier, difficult. But other than that, it's like A tier for everyone else pretty much, like... I played against the best. I played against Al Alois many times. Against Alois, it's probably like closer to S. Against anyone else, it's closer to A. I I I'd say that this is extremely fair. Against Bad Riven, if you're playing as Bad Riven, this probably is around D <laughs> or C. Simple like that. All right. Next up, we have. We are not too far away from being done. And this is a long, long... This is going to be a long video, I guess. Um, Rumble. Rumble is S tier matchup. Uh, it's impossible to play against this champion. Champion is broken. Champion is just mechanically broken. He does absurd, insane... Me mechanically, the champion doesn't make any sense to me. Riot developers, again, did a great job because... Uh, He's supposed to be at his weakest when he is overheating, right? Like, when exactly is he weak? is he supposed to be weak? He is no mana, number one, right? Number two, he charges up his abilities and they do more damage the more he uses them. So, it's just like, the game encourages him to spam as much as possible. That's number one. That's number two. Number three, he's, su like, he's supposed to be weak when he can't use his abilities. But guess what? They added some absolutely absurd, ridiculous amounts of damage to to his auto attacks, and he attacks faster when he overheats. So we we're pretty much reaching reaching a situation where you can't fight him when he's not overheating, and you can't fight him when he's overheating. You can't fight him ever, realistically speaking. 
Especially if he is Ignite. Like, he's just, like... Like, I, I had games when I was even in items, like, let's just say two items or three items, something like that, and Rumble was just standing on top of my face. This was before nerf, but the way they, they nerfed him it wasn't really that, that big of a nerf, honestly. And he was standing on top of my face, on top of Nasus's face, a juggernaut with magic resistance, with massive, with ton of health, and I was getting burned to crisp. I was literally losing a 1v1 in melee range to Rumble. It's like it's, in, it's insanity. Like it's just like you, there's no way to justify this garbage. This garbage. But uh, after nerf, it's a little bit better. The laning phase, though, is still S tier. One of the hardest matchups in the game. If he's no, if he knows what he's doing, um, he's gonna destroy your laning phase. You'll be behind in CS, and he's gonna roam. His ult is very strong. S tier matchup. All right, like it's it's. This is this is this is a tier where you can totally dodge. By the way, it's totally fine to dodge. It, it's it's a, it's reasonable to dodge if you want. If you want to learn Nasus into ev everyone and very very hard like impossible matchups too, you can play. But but uh, yeah, this champion pff, makes me mad. There is no D tier champion. Maybe there will be a free matchup. We'll see. Champion that is super weak early, and then he gets turbo scaled, and he's bad in laning, like in in side lane and stuff like that. Champion bad at everything. We'll see. Maybe there's someone worse than Nasus. It's like D tier essentially means that this champion is like straight up worse than Nasus, right? C tier just means that it's a very easy matchup for Nasus. So, <laughs> Rice, uh, easy A tier, very easy A tier. Uh, Rice is very hard in laning phase. Uh, I would recommend honestly Q maxing into him. E maxing, uh, he will be far. He will be farming, and you will be farming. Q maxing, at least he will scale a little bit harder. This matchup is not super super insane in laning phase. Outside of laning phase, he's gonna press R to roam, uh, which is a problem, and he scales really hard. So A is, I think, perfect for him. Just perfect. Uh, mixed up. We have Senna, nope, Seraphin. Seraphin is reasonably... A reasonably common pick in mid lane. She's getting picked often enough so that I'm not going to ignore her, right? And I think Seraphin in general is like a B. She's not a threat in laning phase, unless you eat all of her abilities. So you can just safely Qmax into her. Uh, then outside of laning phase, Seraphin is very strong. Mid game to late game, she's very strong. So I'm like, <laughs> but like she's not very strong into Nasus overall because she has no mobility. It's quite easy to to kill her when she missteps. And I think B is fair. This, this matchup is like you know, she she's she doesn't counter Nasus in laning phase, so you can scale. And in like. Early to mid in like skirmishes fights you can beat her and like I think that B is totally fair for Seraphin. I would say so. Um next we have Set. Haven't seen Set in a very long time. I would say that Set in laning phase overall is A tier. Outside of laning phase so team fights later on in late game how hard he scales i would put him in like probably still a tier maybe closer to b i think like you, you always be unless you're a giga behind you always beat him like you get try first you get level 11 something like that he never beats you in one v one there's no way so you're a stronger side laner hmm i'll be willing He's not even strong right now, that's the thing. I would be willing to put him in B, man. Seriously. The, 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 I, I'd rather play against Set rather than freaking Orn, for example. I'm serious. Or Jax. I'd rather play against Set. Yeah, like, next to next to Garen, yeah. It's totally, that's, to I think, totally reasonable. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, Shaco in lane, nah, it's like, 
There is there is no pink word in the US, so. <laughs> uh, Shen. Shen is very, very easy A tier. His champion is balanced around having no combat ult, which means that his oil attacks and his Q hurt a lot. His, his three base abilities are incredibly strong. Um, his ult obviously is not a combat ult, so at levels, since level 6 onward you outscale him in the 1v1s. But he's still strong, uh, his ult is a complete game changer early on, and later on too. He can, he can uh, split push against you because it's very hard for you to kill him because of his shields and when he doesn't have his, his shield from the passive, he gets his W. So he will be able to clear the wave without you getting to the turret most often, most likely. So overall, uh, easy A. Uh, good Shen players are very hard to deal with. To deal with. I played against Expetu. I played against... Um, the, the, there, was, there was one more guy that... Shen one trick that was also very good. I played against both of them very hard. Against the best of the best Shen players, honestly, this matchup even gets closer to top of the to, of the A A tier list, maybe even closer to S. But but yeah, uh, singed. I'm not... My microphone still works, guys. I'm just thinking. <laughs> I don't know where to put him, man. Alright, because here's the thing. D... No. Here's the thing. Cinched in landing phase is one of the easiest matchups, matchups in the game. Right? The laning phase cinched is C tier. The problem against good cinched players that I will that I see is they just proxy, which doesn't change anything. Like someone sometimes my chat says like, oh this guy this cinched is proxying and doesn't he understand that this just gives you free stacks? It's not how the game works. I will be getting free stacks against this champion anyway, so it's better for him to proxy, get the wave faster. So I never, I never reach plates at the same time, and then he's in a position to possibly roam mid or screw up my jungler. So like in general, like you're supposed to proxy a cinched. So like in in, in when it comes to laning phase, this is this champion is like C borderline D maybe even. When it comes to laning phase, it's one of the easiest. Like just just like how do you die to singed? Like come on man, like. Even if he walks up to you, you just press auto attack plus Q on him and he loses the trade. He just doesn't have damage to do anything to you, man. But because of how because of how this champion's playstyle look like, what he does. This is this is a macro champion. He just he just pure macro, and that's all there is to it. Right? So like he's definitely useful overall. People think that uh, Cinch is useless. No, that's, it's just, this couldn't be more like far away from truth. By the way, overall, I think that overall difficulty on this matchup is like B, because I had games where Cinch was proxying. Obviously, there's nothing I can do about it. Like, what am I gonna do about it? Run after him, <laughs> and he's proxying and he's messing up my jungler and he's roaming mid after that. And my and my mid laner doesn't re doesn't react to pings, and the mid lane dies, and then Cinch comes back, and he didn't lose a single CS because he was he was proxying. Um, I think B is fair. I think B is totally fair for this champion. Uh, all right, next we have uh, hold on, we have Scarner. I am going to put Skarner top, and I'm going to give you an explanation. Uh, now, Skarner, you're only going to see him in top lane. I've never seen Skarner mid. Uh, and of course, jungle, right? I do believe that Skarner... Is Skarner getting the rework soon, by the way? I know that the champion is... One champion is getting reworked soon. Is this Skarner, or is this someone else? Because I... I I swear, if it's Skarner, then I'm probably not. Go I'm not even going to talk about him. Yeah, Skarner is getting reworked. Yeah, I mean, like, if if he's getting changed in like 
couple of weeks or something like that, I, I'm, I'm not even going to talk to him. Like, it, it's this matchup is so rare anyway. And since he's getting reworked, this this is going to be out, out of date. So, like, whatever. Let's not talk about him. Um, Sejuani is jungle. Then we have Cyan. Cyan is... Now, we need to understand one thing. There are two Scion builds. There's AD and there's Tank. AD, in my opinion, is bad. It's really weak. Tank Scion, on the other hand, is strong. And if someone thinks otherwise, then I don't know, man, just... Like, how can someone with like seven, seven, eight thousand health with massive resistances, with massive amount of CC, with a shield that just gets all these items and then just get gets titanic and does still more damage than nasus and melee because of how titanic works how can the, how can this champion be, be bad like if 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 cyan goes goes uh tank it's like some somewhere around a or something like that in laning phase i would say b and you're definitely supposed to q max into the champion but it's very hard to kill him often you're going to run out of mana before you will have enough to freaking kill him <laughs> and uh and in team fights honestly if, in many cases, he's going to be more useful than Nasus, especially against immobile teams, again, without jumps, because his ult is going to be very dangerous. Maybe I'm going to... Uh, maybe putting him in A is too much. Maybe. That's, that, 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 that's, go that's going to depend from game to game, because if your team has easy way of kiting him, then there, there is a situation when Nasus can be more useful. Sure. I. It could be A, it could be B at the same time. If he goes, if he, if, if this, if, if the guy goes AD Scion, then the champion is bad, to be honest. He's supposed to be a tank. But other than that, this is like, I can't, I can't figure out if I would put him in B or, or A tier. Probably A tier, honestly. Probably overall, probably A tier. Uh, Seaver, no, you're never going to see her, see her in, in, in laning phase. Um, Sona, no. No, Swain. Swain is a very easy A. There is multiple reasons. Uh, you're supposed to Emax into Swain, by the way. Q Max is going to be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, even if you dodge all of his, like, I think it's this ability's E, when th that thing that th he throws and it pulls you back, even if you dodge all of these, you will be taking a lot of harassment from his unmissable ability, this AoE, like. <laughs> He throws ahead of you, ahead of him. Um, you will be punished a lot by that, because it does a lot of damage. Combined with auto attacks, very hard. Uh, if you're if you're gonna emax into him, the lane laning phase is much better, much better. If you emax, laning phase is B. Overall, this this matchup is still A because he's very strong later on. Uh, you'll be emaxing into him most likely, so you don't have much damage to kill him. He's a drain tank. He buys Rhyolize, so you're permanently slowed when you're fighting him later later on. Uh, very hard. Overall, very hard. Silas is easy S tier. Uh, champion is almost impossible to deal with um, if he's good. Uh, laning phase, he beats you. Uh, outside of laning phase, he beats you. He's He steals your ult, and arguably, he's stronger uh, than you are. Uh, late game, he's in, he scales insanely hard also. He doesn't have weaknesses, really. He beats Nasus really hard at every point in the game. Uh, the only time where you can beat him is when he's not giga ahead, like mid-game, something like that. Then you can beat him. But if he's good, he will be ahead, for sure. Against good Silas, you can be. like. And the worst part about it is that you have to Qmax into the champion. If you Emax, you don't have enough damage. He literally heals on you because he is like three second cooldown on his W. He's gonna, he, you're never gonna kill him ever. It's never gonna happen. And the problem is that you know your ult is powerful. Nasus' entire kit is his ult. Without his ult, Nasus is like a walking minion. It's like if you if you say that Nasus is. E Considering that the fact that Nasus is the worst, one of the worst champions in the game in high elo, with his ult, which is almost the entirety of his kit, imagine Nasus without his ult. Just imagine for a second. 
Now, Silas can steal your ult. And I see the problem. <laughs> we have we have a problem, Houston. So yeah, this champion is. I hate playing as this champion. Thankfully nowadays he's not too popular. But uh, Syndra, uh, A tier overall in laning phase B tier, I would say. Uh, Syndra is like easier Oriana. Uh, her ults are not as game changing. I f I feel like her poke is not as as big of a problem, so you can actually Qmax into her, no problem, in my opinion. Uh, probably it's easier to dodge her poke than than Orianna's poke as well. Um, so, or like Syndra, maybe maybe even Syndra right now as she is, maybe even B tier overall. Maybe not even A tier, maybe B. She got nerfed. She's not that insane anymore. I think a B is fair for 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 Syndra, to be honest. I don't know if you agree, guys, but. Can't stop lane. I think that's an easy B. Uh, Kench is not that big of a problem in laning phase as he used to be. I remember times when Kench was one of the hardest Nasus counters in the game. It's not that hard anymore um, because his shield got reworked. So we can actually trade with him early. With lethal tempo if he overextends. This might be a really bad trade over for him. Um, so it's not like he just walks up to, to, to you and ignores minions and he ignores everything and he always wins the trade like in the past. It's not like that anymore. But um, I'm going to talk about Skarner for a second. Kench is kind of like Skarner. You need to be aware of one thing. If you're too close to his turret, this guy is going to... Um, if he runs Phase Rush, for example, uh, he's going to eat you, proc the Phase Rush, walk towards his turret, and you're dead. Because after that, you get slowed on top of that. And this is his strategy in this lane. It's pretty much it's pretty much identical to Skarner's strategy. But Skarner doesn't have to hit you three times. Skarner just waits until you get relatively close to the turret. Then um, he procs his phase rush, ults you, drags you towards the turret, perma stuns you, and you're dead. These these both champions are kind of similar. The only difference is that I feel like Kench is more useful later on in team fights. He is a very long range engage. He's very tanky, and he can eat people. So overall, I think that B is a perfect place for Kench overall. I'm I'm very happy with with uh, putting him in B. Very happy with that. Um. Next up, we have Talia. Talia is a matchup that you're only going to see in mid lane. Uh, I would say that it's going to be an easy B. Um, uh, she's relatively strong. Um. In laning phase, you can definitely Q Max into her, and you're gonna be fine. You should be able to stack well, uh, unless you get hit by every ability. Um, there is no way that she will be able to push you out of lane very easily. Um, she's going to roam with, a, with her ult, which is going to be annoying. But other than that, she doesn't necessarily necessarily counter you later in team fights. Um, I think B is fair. B is very fair for this champion. Uh, next we have Talon. I would say that that, that, that kind of depends. When it comes to laning phase, I was the tier list. Uh, this is uh, Nas's matchup tier list. From the easiest matchups to the hardest in the game. Um, next up we have Talon. Uh, Talon, that depends a lot to be honest. Because Talon is a champion that he... There are different Talon players. The Talon players that I'm scared of the most are the ones that unironically don't sit with you in lane trying to kill you. The ones that insta kill the wave and roam. And such Talons, I would put them in A tier. The Talons that sit with you in lane trying to abuse his uh, trying to abuse their insane burst early on. If you play well and you know what's coming, then they're not going to kill you, and they're wasting their roam potential. So these talent players, I would put them in B. But the really good ones, I'll honestly put in A overall. Like you know, 
Talon, like you know, later on, Talon doesn't stand a chance against Nasus in the one v one. But like this is this is this is a um, mechanically speaking, this champion is incredibly easy to play. This this champion is all about macro, his ability to play the game. So incredibly, like in, in general, like for high elo player, there there are basically three four champions in the game that are hard mechanically, and every single one of them, like the rest is just you know. Basic stuff. Um, Teemo. Ooh. Alright, so there's two different types of Teemo players. There are Teemo players, and there is Alan. Two, three, four. Now, Alan, two, three, four. Is an S2 matchup, right? Because he will not die to you. He runs phase rush, he pokes you, he blinds you before cannons. And on top of that, you, you are absolutely forced to Emax into him. And he will still position himself with his freaking fast small rat in a way that you will not be able to hit him in the wave at the same time. So you're just both farming. And then good luck dealing with 7 day blind. On, on, on four second cooldown later in team fights. Just good luck. So Alan is an S2 matchup. <laughs> and then there is other team of players. And other team of players I would put them I, I would put this matchup in A. This is still every time you have to Emax in, in, into this matchup. But the other team of players are just not as good. Uh, they will just eat damage from, from your E. And you will be able to clear the wave at the same time. And they will not be as as good later in team fights. And like, you know, I, I think I'm, Timo putting him in A is like fair. I think it's totally fair. Of course, as Timo players get worse, like like I, I can totally see uh, low elo players uh, struggling against Nasus extremely hard because Timo will just like ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho on duty, <laughs> they're just gonna walk up. They just take poke from E, and they're just gonna get dove or something. Like they're just gonna get run over level six. Like I can totally see this matchup being extremely easy in low elo. For me though, um, A and Alan is S. <laughs> Alan is so much better than other Timo players. No offense, but he he just is. That uh, that kind of shows. That kind of freaking shows because many of these matchups, if you were playing against insane players, like if this was, let's assume that this is spear shot, right? This 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 matchup becomes S tier, like just like that. This is Expeto S tier. This is freaking Ranger S tier. So all of a sudden, like half of the of this freaking thing over here, these A and B tier matchups, all of a sudden, freaking nothing is playable for Nasus. This is pretty much, this is pretty much state of Nasus in high elo. GM Challenger, this, 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 all of these would be in freaking S tier. It's crazy. But, uh, but it is what it is. Alright, next up we have, uh, what do we have? We have Trundle. I would say Trundle is an easy A tier matchup. Uh, the reason why he's not S is because you can deal with him in, 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 uh, in side lane. And he doesn't really offer that much in team fights, in my opinion. This this champion doesn't offer that much in team fights. He gets countered by Wither really hard after they after after they removed uh, unflinching. Uh, in in side lane, he can never kill kill you. Never. You're supposed to Q max into this matchup, which means that you max Wither second. Guess what happens when you have rank five rank five points into Wither. If he engages in you, you press Wither and you walk away laughing, right? It's just, he he doesn't have anything to get to you. Um, in a straight up 1v1, if you want to fight him, if you're not behind, I think it's even possible to kill him if if he just presses R on you. Wither, become dust. Uh, that being said, he can build anti, anti Nasus build, something like Triforce, Frozen Heart, Bork, and it's going to be an and, and, and for example, Sterx after that. And you're probably going to be losing 1v1s against him. But the thing is that you don't, you don't have to take them. 
So overall in side lane, side lane, I think it th this matchup is slightly better for him, but uh, he can't just ignore you if you're not trolling. If you didn't troll early, he just can't ignore you and just you know ignore you and g get the turrets. It's not gonna happen. And in team fights, I think you're more useful than he is. So I would say that A is like very nice. I'm very very happy putting Trundle in A tier. Um, Tristana, if you Q-Max into this matchup, it's easy S. Uh, excuse, excuse me, you can't Q-Max into this matchup. Let me put it this way. If you're E-Maxing into this matchup and you play it properly, she's B throughout the entire game pretty much. You farm, she farms, then you build Randoons later on after Triforce, and it's just like a regular AD carry later on, mid game to late game. So I would say B is extremely fair if you're E-maxing. If you if you plan on Q-maxing into this matchup, just dodge because, like, just don't do it. <laughs> just, please, just don't do it. Um, Trindamir. Whew. All right, so Trindamir, laning phase, Trindamir would be A. You don't want to Emax into the champion, you want to Qmax. That being said, outside of laning phase, Trindamir never beats you in a 1v1. There is multiple problems with Trindamir though. Trindamir, once, Trindamir is one of the best split pushers, split pushers in the game, and he's a good Trindamir will use that. He will clear the wave, you are, you are stuck in bot lane, you kind of can't, like, or top lane, wherever you are. You kind of can't move. And he just moves with like 420 movement speed and an E on like 5 second cooldown or something. And he just moves towards the fight where the fight is. And the champion overall is just... Can impact the game so much m more and better. Uh, if we're talking about the best Trindamir players, then the, the matchup is freaking S tier probably. But That being said, he never does anything to you once you finish Randuins, which should be your second item in, in this matchup. You get Triforce early, maybe you can even, before Triforce, maybe you get uh, Warden's Mail. And he already, he turns from lane bully to he never can touch you again. That being said, the champion is just like more useful overall. He's so mobile that, that this his mobility is going to be a huge pain he has to deal with. If this is a bad Trindamir player we're talking about, and he will try to stay with you in 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 a side lane, then it's like he's useless, right? He's not going to do anything to you. In any other scenario, it's A. It's A, boys. I think it's very fair. TF is an S tier matchup. Uh, TF is one of the most broken champions in the game right now. Still shocked that. Uh, never mind. He got. He just got nerfed, right? Um. Oh, he got. He just got nerfed. He got nerfed really hard. Okay, so ADTF is not a thing anymore. APTF. All right, that changes things around. If if ADTF is not a thing anymore, I would say that the APTF is probably around eight here. He's just gonna clear waves and ult and and give his team advantage. He still has a buff where. He doesn't need to wait for an auto attack. His his W is is, is an auto attack reset, so he can, he can instantly get the gold card if he wants. Uh, so it's very hard to get to him overall. Uh, and he's the main problem of this champion is that he's going to make advantage early on for his team, and then he can control the map with his ult uh, and pick people off. So it's not an easy matchup in laning phase. It's pretty easy, but. Outside of that, it's it's freaking tough. He's gonna be doing good. TF is going to be doing a lot, definitely way more than Nasus. I promise you that. So, so A is fine. After nerfs, probably not S, but A is fine. Um, Urgot, Urgot is a very very easy A. Uh, Urgot is very strong in laning phase if he plays well. Um, in team fights, he's useful. Arguably, you could argue that in team fights, Nasus could use more potential if Nasus potentially has more to offer. If Urgot doesn't get a good ult, then Nasus definitely has you know potential to to be more useful. But in laning phase, he's a lane bully. Uh, you can't 
you, you need to be much better than him to kill him solo in laning phase. You need to sidestep his E or something like that, bait him, just be better basically. But other than that, if you're just going to walk up to him and try to fight him, level 6, level 7, you're most likely going to lose. So, I think A is extremely fair when it comes to Urgot. Very fair. Um, you, dear. I am thinking about A or B. In laning phase, the, this, this matchup is like A. Outside of laning phase, I don't know why, but nowadays I feel like Ur that Udyr is just not super useful, super strong. I'm serious. I think that Nasus provides more. Like, I'm dead serious. Should you rush war Wardens into Urgot? Um... Sheen first. Without Sheen, you have no kill pressure. <clears throat> um, yeah, you dear. In laning phase, it's probably A, something like that. But it's if you play well, he's not still not, not going to kill you. This, this this champion is so telegraphed. It's crazy. Like he just walks up to you, and and, and there we go. He walks. <laughs> and outside of laning phase, I would say B, man. I'm serious. Udyr is not that. I, I, I see Udyr. Every time I see Udyr in any, any team, I'm like, all right, man. Like, nice. <laughs> That's my fir first first thought, first feeling. Uh, Vagar, Vagar is C. Uh, I wouldn't put him in D just because of how ridiculous his ridiculously strong his AOE, AOE stun is, and just because he scales into you know really high damage numbers. That being said, the champion is one of the easiest to play against in the game. Uh, he doesn't do anything early on. Uh, he will not really have prio against you. Um, he doesn't stand a chance in the side lane. Uh, you can just dive him if you know that nobody's there. Uh, again, I'm not going to put him in D. He has, he scales really hard, and he is one of the best abilities in the game. His E. Is like wall that stuns for two seconds. Everyone that tries to go through this ability is crazy, but uh, it would be foolish to put him in in B tier. At the same time, because it's just stack for free and you just move. He can't really follow you because he's so weak. Like even at level six, he's weak. He's so much weaker than you. It's just vain. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's Vayne top. Vayne mid, I, I don't see any Vayne mid players. Uh, Vayne is very simple, actually. Vayne is S tier. If you Q max, you can't really play the game. And if you E max, she's B. The reason why... And, 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 and it's B permanently. Outside of laning phase 2. The reason why she's B is... And I have to praise Riot for that. They did some good changes. They finally changed her from being like a like true damage bot like I don't know how to even describe like just fully playing fully doing true damage I think she did, like does 8% per proc nowadays so they changed her power from true damage into I think she got some damage on her Q some time ago I think she got lower lower, lower cooldown some like something there some like she got changed overall and uh, them lowering her true damage definitely makes her not as big of a threat for Nasus. And guess what? What happens if she struggles in laning phase into a uh, into Emax Nasus? She's not that big of a threat overall. Wither still counters this, cha this champion extremely hard. Something we need to keep in mind. Uh, and one point into Wither is going to be decent enough. If she doesn't uh, uh, like if she doesn't run a cleanse top, it's even worse. I think that B, if you're emaxing, is totally, totally fine. And I'm, I'm talking like laning phase and throughout the game. Uh, if you Q max, she's here. <laughs> just, just, just if you don't hate yourself, just don't do it. Honestly. Uh, other than that, it's like I would put her B. I would rather, I would rather see her than many of these other champions in A tier. Pro probably all of them, <laughs> in fact. <laughs> She does 10% now, yeah, but she maxes Q to get lower cooldown, I think. 
so she's not gonna get there on top of that she's not gonna get that 10 percent uh instantly so Valkos, uh no we have virus for virus doesn't play i never see virus in solo lane anymore so we're just gonna skip him but against against virus just just two wards uh just emax into him and that's it she he plays like i don't know like he's similar to one of these champions whatever it's like i don't know maybe if you if you emax into him he's like ashken but without without uh Ashkan having um, his mobility, right? Like, just Emax into him and, and, and clear the wave and poke him out. You'll be fine. Uh, Valkos, in my opinion, is... Now, I have, I'm have i going to have a hard time rating this champion because Valkos, um, personally, to me, Valkos is an A-tier matchup. He doesn't need to be A-tier matchup, though. The reason why it's A-tier for me is because I have extremely extreme difficulty dodging his abilities for some reason I, i'm talking about his q namely for some reason i i, I, I maybe this champion is like in my brain or something but i can it's it's hard so hard for me to, do, to dodge these abilities maybe if i was playing off mic or something and if i was more focused then it would be easier but it's just hard for me to dodge them i don't have a problem like that with any other champion in the game any other champion if you're if you're gonna ask my my chat, I bet they're gonna say that I'm pretty decent at juking. Honestly, I'm definitely not the worst mechanically, like not even close. So, to be fair, this is this is just my problem, right? That being said, this champion is still very annoying to deal with because he just presses R from very afar and does massive amounts of true damage while slowing you. But I guess I, I just I can't justify this immobile mage to put him in A tier versus Nasus because <coughs> he doesn't really have opportunity to outrun you very very hard. You can always E max uh, if you're gonna E max into this champion. This is going to be easy B. So he's B. He's B. Uh, next we have Twitch mid. Twitch mid, uh, don't Q max into this champion. Again, it's it's another AD carry. You Q maxing into this champion, it's S tier. Uh, if you uh, E max into this champion, he's B tier pretty much. It's like it, it's like it, this is like a theme with these AD carries. Like the AD carries don't counter Nasus that hard nowadays, simply because AD carries are weak. And the hardest scaling AD carries usually build crit. The problem with crit is that we have Randuans in the game, which is Nasus' main item. If 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 Nasus see crit on enemy team. That being said, which is a little bit different because he might go AP, but still, like it's just you wither him later, man. You just wither him later. Wither, become dust, and uh, and he he's a rat on top of that, so. I think it's just like it's it's fair like all these AD carries you just Emax and all these AD carry. I mean it's, it's easy easy to to what to get out of this um, match um, tier list is that you just Emax versus AD carries. <laughs> all right, you just Emax versus these guys. Um, next up we have Vex. Vex is easy B. The champion. Is mediocre. Period. She is not a big threat in laning phase. She's not a huge threat out outside of laning phase. He can, she can be a problem. In some cases, but I'm totally, I will be totally fine playing as this champion every game, literally. She's not. De she definitely is not in C. She just got buffed. But B, totally reasonable. So for some reason, this champion really reminds me of Amy. I don't know why. It's like similar difficulty. You can also Q max into her if you want, and then she becomes a non existent threat pretty much in laning phase. Easy B, in my opinion. Definitely not C, easy B. That's it. Uh, Victor, uh, Vi, obviously no. Uh, Vigo, no. I mean, occasion insanely occasionally you're going, to, you're going to see this champion in top lane, but. Just too rare. Victor, very easy B. 
Uh, Victor is like kind of like Syndra, I would say. I put Syndra in B tier, right? Syndra is harder than Victor, in my opinion. Victor is kind of like Syndra, but he does less damage. And that's it. You can, you can. It's harder to juke his abilities, but for the most part, you can get hit by his E, and he still doesn't have what it takes to push you out of, out of lane if you don't int. Uh, it's a pretty much free, just stack Q matchup, and later on, he offers I think less than Syndra in team fights. It's it's debated. It depends. It's debatable, but like Syndra's long range stun is extremely OP. Uh, Victor doesn't have that, so I think B's perfect for him. B tier is perfect for for um, for. Um, Victor. Vlad is B, uh, without a shadow of doubt. The reason why Vlad is B is that in laning phase, it's an easy matchup. Outside of laning phase, Vlad is notorious for getting pentakills. Uh, with phase rush, uh, combined with his W, he can just literally slide into your entire team, doing massive AoE damage. Uh, that being said, S against Elite, I guess Elite will probably would be like A tier against someone really, really good. Like, again, like this this tier list. If you're playing against the best players on 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 these particular champions, the best players that there are, then every single one of these matchups go one tier higher, right? That that's how it goes. So all of these, if I was playing against Capsis LeBlanc, she's S tier, right? If I was playing against like I don't know who is like pop, like notorious here, like. Uh, for being like, like if if this was this, if this was Dopa's TF, this is S tier, and so on. This is Solar Baka is S tier. Like I'm just trying to like you know, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> uh, but Vlad is B, easy laning face. He's a big threat uh, in team fights though for your team. Uh, in side lane, though, very easy to deal with him, though. Side lane, you, Nasus always wins versus Vladimir. Uh, possibly even 1v2. You can you can soak pressure. So that's one way to play against Vladimir. To constantly be a threat in the side lane so that he doesn't teamfight. Um, but other than that, B is fair. Mm, Volibear is going to be A. Volibear is very strong nowadays with his like tank-ish build, something that he does, whatever. Uh, the problem with Volibear is that he has built-in Sunder on his W. But it heals way more. <laughs> the, the only problem with, with, uh, with W is that he needs to use it twice. And, and then consecutive Ws will heal him for absolutely insane amounts of health. Um, but he's tough, very tough to deal with in laning phase. You pretty much have to Qmax into him. Uh, the good news is that his passive will make him push the lane, so it's not very easy for him to freeze. But um, he's A. He's hard to kill later. He does get outscaled. I, I have to say that he does. He does get outscaled. Uh, he does get outscaled eventually. But um, you're never gonna kill him. Never gonna kill him as Nasus. If he builds tank, like something like Iceborne plus something else, you're never gonna kill him. You don't have damage to kill him. Even if you if you get grievous wounds to cut his healing, you're still not gonna kill him in the one v one. But that being said, he's not gonna kill you either. So, so yeah, it's kind of like a weird champion. Uh, I think A is fine for him. Um, and next up, we're almost done, boys. Next up, we have Warwick. And again, the same story. Here we would put Horn Hornlime, and Warwick overall is in A, maybe even B. If you play well into Warwick early on. And by well, I mean just don't get baited into running him down when he's low health, because it's probably going to be a disaster. And I would say that he's close to B. Uh, he still has this broken uh, Bork into uh, Ginzo's build that will absolutely obliterate you into pieces. Um, and then he probably can get something like Terminus, and I think he, at this point you always lose to Warwick in the side lane. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. But he can't, again, he can't do anything under turret. He's not going to ignore you and just get turret. Uh, he can't do that. Uh, so like in laning phase, I would say that this champion is around B. I don't think this is like... 
I, if I saw Warwick top lane and, and it's not Horn Lime, I'm like, okay, fine. But uh, I, I think B is fair. I, I don't know, man. I don't see the huge threat that the champion can offer. In team fights, also, as long as you're frontlining, like uh, until he doesn't, like, if he doesn't find a uh, a flank, and ults a very important target, then like, w w what does he really do? His w is really strong, though. It's it's okay. I would be scared way more of Jax's E, for example, but still. <laughs> but it's it's okay, I guess. I I I I don't care, man. I'm gonna put him in B. I have insanely high win rate against Warwick players. I guess Horn Lime. I had like two games last season. I think I I I I won both of them too. So just wasn't that insanely useful in team fights. I don't know. Um. Uh, Wukong is B. The reason why Wukong is B is because he's weak right now. That's the only reason. If he was stronger overall, he was meta, he would be A. Other than that, he's B. Just, you know, you, you outscale him at level 6, level 7. In team fights, he's still strong, but he doesn't do as much insane amount of damage as he used to. Not even close. So, B is perfect for him. Right now, if he's gonna get buffed, which probably he will, uh, because we are only buffing champions in this game, we're not nerfing, then, um, then he's probably gonna be A tier. Uh, next up, we have Zin Zhao. Which we're gonna skip because nobody plays this champion in, in, in a... In a... <laughs> in a um, solo lane. Zeraf. Zeraf is a C tier champion. We found another C tier uh, matchup, guys. Uh, Zeraf is a champion that can never push you out of lane. Ever. As long as you keep on dodging, it's just not gonna happen. Period. Um, I mean, I, I, even if you even if you're bad at dodging, unless you eat absolutely everything from him, which is is not going to be possible because accidentally you're going to dodge something eventually, right? Uh, you just stack, stack, stack. Azeroth is one of the champions where you're going to have usually legendary amount of stacks. You're gonna you're gonna get your your stack records in 12 or 14 or 15 minutes or 10 minutes. You're gonna get your stack records against the champion usually. But, he's not D because he's very annoying later on. He's an artil artillery mage, so once he gets his items, he can very easily um, kill your carries from safe distance. So, definitely not D. He has his uses, just like Vagar. This is, this is the reason why he's not D. But, uh, the matchup itself, C tier. Easy, easy C tier. There's only one problem also with uh, Zeref at level 7, around level 7, around level 9. He's just going to be killing waves almost instantly and then moving a little bit to try to look for a good ult, which also makes it annoying. Because he can get fed quite easily. Um, Yasuo is... I think it's totally fair to put him in B tier. Like against best Yasuo players, probably something around A tier. But the thing with Yasuo is, if you play the laning phase again properly, uh, he will not be the biggest threat of all time. And outside of laning phase, Randuins counters this champion really hard. Triforce into Randuins. If they have Yasuo and a crit a AD carry bot lane, you will be tanky into these guys. Very. And Wither counters him too. So... I can't. I just can't put him in A. It's just he gets countered by Randuins, which is Nasus's almost main item, basically, and he gets countered by uh, by Wither. I can't put him higher. The good Yasuo's will be a huge pain in the ass, and in, in, in A tier probably, but like very. I mean, very good, right? But other than that, just he doesn't counter Nasus. Uh, Yone is S tier. Uh, period. This is my perma band, by the way. This is the most disgusting champion in the game, in my opinion, uh, in high elo. This champion just doesn't belong in this game. Like the amount of pos the, the amount of tools that the, the, these developers gave this champion are just absurd. 
Like he can, he can like move with his shadow this way or that way. He can engage. He can disengage. He has knockups, like like an incredible amount of knockups all the time, and they're way harder than dodge than Yasuo's cues, Yasuo's knockups. Uh, he has a shield. Like everything is, is on low cooldown. His ult is game changing. Again, he's like better Yasuo in every aspect. This champion is busted. He's literally busted. I I don't understand why he's allowed to be existing in in his current form. I don't get it. I legitimately don't get it. Like is is like because his win rate is forty eight percent in low elo. Th 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 is that the reason? I don't know. It's, it makes no sense to me. It's like champion is just busted. And you could say, like, even if Wither, let's just say, counters him a little bit, he's still busted. And with Lethal Tempo, yes, sure. Lethal Tempo got nerfed, blah, 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 blah. But he's, this champion is still busted. His kid is, like, he, it doesn't belong in this game. Put this champion out of the game and put him in League of Legends 2. How about that? <laughs> Alright, next up we have Yorick. Yorick is B. Um, this champion, this, this matchup becomes a tier difficulty if you're really bad at dodging. Um, it's quite easy, at least for me, to dodge his E's. If he misses his E, he doesn't do any damage. Level six, you run him down, you kill him. He's weaker than you. Uh, Cyrilda's got nerfed, so he doesn't perma slow you anymore. Only when you're below fifty percent health. Which was the main reason why I hated this matchup in the past, because he just built full lethality and he just built Cyrildas and he perma slows you and he's insanely annoying to deal with. But he still, even if he had this build in the past, he still loses if you have, when you have Ghost and Flash because you just flash over his wall. Every time you have Flash, he's dead, right? He doesn't stand a chance. Other than that, I would say easy B. He's annoying in laning f in inside lane. If you leave him for for ten seconds, he's gonna take turrets. Uh, other than that, Nas is just stronger in melee. That's it. Zed is B, mainly because Zed is not very strong right now. Uh, I know that they're keeping him intentionally weaker, but um, because something like I don't know, like usually I don't want to be listening to. To write out uh, developers, uh, developer explanations because I get pissed off when I when I hear what they have to say. Their explanations just freaking resident sleeper man. But uh, Zed is easy B. Uh, champion doesn't count to counter you in laning phase. Champion doesn't counter you outside of laning phase. He's just like he's gonna clear the wave and move like many other champions, like Talon for example. But the problem is that Talon is e even better at roaming, so Talon is in A. Again, depends. I, as I explained before, Talon could be in B too. It's kind of like Zed is weaker Talon in my opinion right now, so has less impact. Um, then we have Zack. Zack top lane. Zack is in very simple A tier. Very simple. Uh, Zack is not necessarily the biggest uh, threat in laning phase, although he can be if you ate if you eat too much damage from him. He's going to do a lot of damage with his full combo. That being said, Zack is very strong outside of laning phase. His abilities are very strong. He's tanky. He does a lot of damage until late game. Um, he has massive amount of CC in his kit. Uh, you have to kill him twice. I mean, this, the passive, his passive is like the 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 least problematic thing, to be honest. <laughs> this is like not something I would care about. But overall, Zack is a very strong champion. Uh, he offers more in team fights than Nasus. He can push you out uh, the moment you're you're about to get to someone. He can Q you, uh, and then you're getting pushed, and then he he's gonna E you, and you're getting knocked up, and then he's gonna knock you up again and push you at the same time of his ult. Uh, you don't move against this champion really. Um, I love how most Na champs are strong against Nasus, bro. This is this is this is optim this is optimistic. As I said before. If we if we were talking like very high elo, if 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 these guys were like the the, the best players on their champions, in a game in the EU or like world overall, then all of them would be one tier higher, all of them, pretty much. 
all of these one tier higher, all of these one tier higher. So we would be like sitting here at like pretty much ev everyone S tier and the rest would be A tier. <laughs> Like the Nasus is, is one of the weakest champions in the game. Like, <clears throat> this is what it is. Uh, Zix is probably B. It's quite easy to juke his abilities. I would probably Q Max into this champion. It's quite easy to juke. And then he. You know, he's useful in team fights later on. Later on, for, for sure, he's useful. But I would say that he's B. Yeah, I think. I, there isn't too much to explain here. Like, you just. Get into lane, you farm, and then he's just a mage, without anything too crazy, right? It's it's a, it's a classic B. Um, Zillion, A, very 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 easy A. Uh, the reason why Zillion is A not because he counters you uh, very hard in laning phase, is because you can't move against him. Like Zillion is like a mastermind, like he's just controlling everyone, like, you know, like he's like, uh, I don't know, playing chess. And oh, this guy moves over here, and this guy moves over here, right? <laughs> well, guess what happens to Nasus the moment he can't move? Guess what happens, boys? That's right. And Zillion just prevents you from moving, and Nasus' biggest counter, for the most part, is when he can't move. Uh, the, the, the other biggest Nasus counter is when he loses to someone 1v1. <laughs> which is which is the problem because I'm supposed to scale really hard. But, um, well, it is what it is. Uh, Zyra, no. This will be the last one. And then after that I'm going to check real fast if maybe I missed someone. But, uh, oh, we have still two champions that uh, got released recently. We have Huey and we have Sca uh, and we have Smolder. So uh, Zyra, uh, excuse me, Zoe is a very easy A tier. It's a very hard matchup. Uh, don't Q Max into this champion. I don't recommend it. Maokai, nobody plays Maokai in top lane. Nobody. He's only support. Um, Zoe, uh, I would put easily. In A tier, don't Q Max into this champion. You will eat one bubble, and literally at level 5, 60 to 70 percent of your health is gone. You're gonna eat one bubble, and you're forced to get out of lane to, 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 to go back. She does insane burst, um, not that big of a problem, I would say. Not, 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 a, not a champion that will counter Nasus later on, mid to late game. In laning phase, you're forced to Emax though against her 100%. Uh, just clear the wave, scale, get some magic resistance, and then in team fights, uh, he will. She will still, if your team is not careful, she will still occasionally one shot someone. Very annoying champion to deal with. The most annoying thing about her, I hate, is the fact that how many summer spells she can just steal. Right, so when someone uses summer spell, she can just like, oh nice, I have I have second flash now. Like, what the hell is this shit? But um. Yeah, Zoe A. Um, yeah, and we're left with two champions that there are no icons for them. So I'm going to use this, whatever that is. <laughs> first first um, icon, we have... Uh, I mean, first champion, we have Smolder. And Smolder, if, if you're Q-maxing into Smolder, he's like A tier, something like that. But if you are E-maxing into Smolder, he's actually quite easy he's B but this is laning phase uh, if it gets too late smolder scales unbelievably hard late game now he does so much true damage and he has a uh, like a mini elder elder like passive something like that um, so the, the thing is that wither doesn't counter this champion this hard because during his flight, he's not slowed. Kind of like Aurelian Soul, similar to him. But I can't put this champion is... like, It's really hard to say, to be honest. It's really, really hard to say. Depends if the game gets really late. If the game doesn't get late, he's B. If the game gets late, he's A. So... It's it's A, a or B, depending on what, what you know what's going to happen during the game, right? The games don't get late very often nowadays, so I guess 
I, I guess I would be I, I, I guess I would put him closer to B but but yeah all right and last but not least we have Huey. Uh, I'm gonna use the same icon by the way uh, <laughs> Uh, when it comes to Huey, you have to Emax into the champion, otherwise you're go he's gonna poke you out of your freaking socks, right? Uh, if you're Emaxing on the other hand versus the champion, you're gonna be fine. You'll just farm. Uh, if he is a little bit worse, maybe there's a room for uh, to 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 run him down, or maybe with your jungler. Uh, if he is better, you're just gonna farm, and then later later on in the game. He's kind of like, uh, I would say, probably around eight here. Um, he has CC. His ult slows incredibly hard for a long time, so it's hard for you to navigate if your if his ult lands on on you. Um, he has many abilities, obviously. So he he has ten abilities. So uh, he's gonna use different ones depending on the situation. He can poke people from 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 afar. Um, like Zeref, kinda, because he has uh, long range abilities too. I, I think it's, he's as I think he's A tier, uh, not B. Com compare comparing him to like Smolder, like you know he's 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 more difficult than some of these mages and hard and and worse to deal with. So no, if you're Q maxing into him, he's S. You, you can't Q max into the champion, but if you E max, he's like probably A is fair. And uh, I'm gonna check real fast. Maybe I missed someone, but I'm pretty sure that uh, you're not going to see any of these champions almost ever in solo lane. Once every, like, you're gonna see any of these champions once every 50, 70 games, 100 games, something like that. So, like, yeah, I think it's totally fine. All right, boys, that was. I'll be honest. That took. This is the final tier list. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, we ended up noticing that there are only four good matchups for Nasus in the game right now in Hilo. That you can feel like you can do something against these guys, actually. Uh, the rest of them is pretty much impossible or you always you always need to be better than the opponent in order to, to be winning games. You have to literally just be better at the game. So uh, there isn't a single D tier matchup, um, because like th th there is just nothing like you know you just so blatantly destroy that uh, I I just don't know man like there's just no bad champions there there's just no worse champions than Nasus I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like in high low it's really tough. You have to you guys you, you guys don't understand how how punishable it is like one misstep can end your game like, literally one miss and i'm not talking like one mistake one miss you, you're gonna click in the wrong place once just a little bit and this can end your game if you play against one of these abominations or like and or like many of these champions too so it's one one movement in the wrong direction and you can lose the game it's, this is how this is this is how bad it is it's like, oh, you you play against a champion that you made made mistake into into this guy, and and the, the, this champion scales hard. You're out of the game for the rest of the game. You you can't do anything. So, so that's the tier list. It took way longer than I thought. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna be playing games after that, but I think this tier list took almost like what like around two hours. So I'm definitely not playing today anymore. Uh, thank you much for watching, boys. Uh, if you have any questions. Uh, you guys, you can ask on Discord. The link is down below. Feel free. But for the YouTube audience, uh, feel free to ask me in the comments. Uh, maybe you disagree with with you know someone being here or, or there. Maybe maybe you uh, meet other champions very often and you want to hear my opinion. Uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, that's going to be it for today, boys. Thanks all for watching.